the Slayer's time is now. Against all the evil that hell can conjure, we will send unto them only you. I offer you a gift. Take it. It will give you strength. is going on to the internet, to every beauty out there, to every slayer. And what is going on? Uh, I am Joshua Boyle, your boy Tokyo Punch-Out Community Manager from Bethesda, and I am joined by none other than, wait, I got it the right way, Game Director of Doom Eternal at id Software, Hugo Martin. How's it going, brother? How are you? Good, man. Good to see you guys. Good, 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 good. We are back, again. back, back again. Hit it. What do you got? Can't see myself, so we're going to wing it. Because I we, we consolidated it to one monitor to yep. try to make sure that performance is, is peak this time. We got your got guys' advice yep. on, on how to do this correctly. That's right. And uh, we should be good. We should be good this time. All good. That's right. Because it's all about peak performance all the time. Last week, uh, some people in chat might have been surprised to see that, again, we are playing through the entirety of Doom Eternal, the campaign. Uh, and we were playing on Hurt Me Plenty up until last week. And then Hugo turned up the heat, turned it up a notch. Again, he's playing on a PC with an inverted controller. And he was like, I think we should do Nightmare. How about that? For a second, you yeah. were going crazy. And you were like, let's do Ultra Nightmare. And I was like, <laughs> this schedule might not work out if we'd switch to Ultra Nightmare. But uh, you're doing really well. You're doing really well last yeah. week on Nightmare. So We were. And and dealing with frame rate and technical difficulty. We were killing it. Yeah. We were killing it. A couple of out of that uh, experience, you mm -hmm. know, uh, a couple of changes, uh, rebalances to be made from the game. Uh, effective immediately, all power-ups will be removed from the base campaign. BfGs are going to be removed. Um, what else, Josh? Um, I don't know. We just no gotta, quad, we gotta no berserk, uh, no bullshit. Basically, that's it. We're it's... we're we're gonna call that uh, Gen X mode, uh, and and it, it's gonna be awesome. It, it'll be amazing. <laughs> it's coming. When's it coming? I don't know. No one does. Soon. It's coming soon, soon, trademark, of course, of course. <laughs> what was I thinking? That's the only time frame that could come in. Um, That's right. But we don't just play Doom Eternal and hang out and have fun with all you guys on both YouTube and Twitch every single week. But we also, you know, we're doing the work from home thing. It's a pandemic. So how we stay together and we stay glued and connected at the, at the proverbial Slayer hips 
is we get a little glimpse into uh, some of the goings-ons over there in the Martin household. We have talked yes. through a lot of fun things that you've been working on. You had some Games Workshop stuff going on with your with the kiddos. Didn't, didn't How's make that any going? progress. Okay. Well, uh, as usually the case, the, the hobby uh, eyes are bigger than the hobby hands. So... <laughs> You know, you, you have big expectations around these things, yeah. and then you, you paint like three of them, and, mm -hmm, and it's, mm -hmm. it just kind of sits there. So the, the fortress and, and my army is, is moving along slowly, <laughs> uh, I, I have to be honest. But then, then uh, I, did get, I did get a new car. I need to stop going to the hobby shop because these things, what? these are so what beautiful. What is that? Look at that. That's a slot car. Can you believe that? That's a slot car. Look, it, it, this is a Ferrari FXX K Evolution, and I... uh, it's actually spelled like that. I'm not trying to be. Uh, oh wow! Yeah, you really are. <laughs> but the, the, it really is. <laughs> the, this thing, my son picked it out. This is this is his, and uh, I I can't get enough of how these things look. It is so cool. Yeah, and and. Um, Yes, I'm, I know. I'm all about it. These I love days. that like black strip through the middle of it, and every time uh, we we show off something new that has to do with the car, I'm always like, "So when does the skin go into Doom Eternal? Because the Slayer is the car. You drive the Ferrari, the <laughs> F14, the, the whatever analogy we want to make. So it's like the black and white skin. Like just set it. Yeah, yeah. Let's just in your mind, just be like, I saw that. I that, saw that before it was the skin. I I would love to do that, dude. There's so many the golf colors, you know, orange and orange and blue, or yeah. like, oh, there's there's so many color schemes we could do. Uh, no, it, 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 yeah, that, those, those cars are sick. And then, um, what else is going on? I uh, I, I I'm catching up catching up on some movies, mm, you know, mm, doing mm. A little, do, doing a little research uh, on on some things. And I watched uh, I I it's been meaning to watch this for. However old this movie is, but Dances with Wolves. I actually finally okay. sat down. Which my wife was dying. She's like, "Why are we watching this?" I'm like, I've never seen it. Really? Watch oh, I thought you were gonna say she's dying because she's like, "Finally, we get the Kay Costner <laughs> in this household." It's been too well, long. She's, she's just like, "How could you have not seen this movie?" You okay, know? That's, fair. Uh, that's fair. But but I did, and uh, impressive. Little cringe, little cringe, sure. but uh, still. Uh, a love letter to that part of the country, which is not too far from where Texas is, a little bit north of us in Dakota. I understand it was filmed, but uh, I do love this part of the country, so I love living in Texas, and um, it was uh, it was pretty good. And then I watched uh, a movie that I know you have a of a good opinion on is uh, the first Captain America, which was also another movie that slipped through my fingers, and I never got a chance to watch it. Of course, nice. I've seen Winter Soldier. So sure, sure, Winter sure. Soldier. Winter Soldier, arguably the best uh, in the top three Avengers films, I believe. Uh, what would you say? Like, if you were to give Josh your top three uh, uh, Marvel films, Marvel Marvel what, Cinematic Universe, MCUs, in, in, in no in no order. Okay, but like, give give me your top three. I mean, for me, I think it's Black Panther, Endgame. And the spicy hot take is I actually love the first Captain America. And we could talk about why because I want to get into it because this is a heated topic because a lot of people, just like you said, go hard to the paint on Winter Soldier. They love them some Winter Soldier, the second it's, Captain America. Because it's awesome. It is so good. It's yes, really good. Yes. But I don't know. But tell us, why, tell, us, tell okay. us why you think uh, the first one might be as good if not better. All right. Gather close. Uh, the fire is lit. Okay. So this is the, the, the stream is now the bonfire. It will keep your entire family <laughs> warm and safe. Here's, let's get into this. All right. The first Captain America. First of all, it's an origin story. And you know, in an origin story, you can always do the most depth of character development because it's not the situations they get in. It's going from, you know, literally zero to hero and especially in his sense. Go ahead. What do you got? From ordinary to extraordinary. Yes, keep going. Boom, somebody write it down. Okay, chat's already <laughs> doing it. Okay. Um, second of all, and this is like one of the biggest things, it's not just that for the rest of the entire series of all of the Avengers stuff and Winter Soldier, that yeah, yeah. character, Captain America, is like a fish out of water. And that shtick gets so old to me where I'm just like, I get yeah. it. He's from the past. So when he's not a fish out of water, when he's naturally the character he was born to be or destined to be, that's the real meat of it. And the villain in Hugo Weaving, which shout outs to Hugo Weaving in Red Skull, and the whole Hydra thing and all that weird propaganda stuff, I love that stuff. You know what I mean? It's the same thing with like the first Wonder Woman movie. It's like when it's Wonder Woman versus the Nazis, 
Everybody can get yeah. behind that. Everybody wants to see that. Whereas when you start branching out from that and doing like whoever just happens to be around at the time for Captain America to beef with, even if it's like inner fighting, I'm just like, it's not as interesting as being like, Red Skull belongs to this world in Hydra and so does Captain America in this world. And it's like, go at it. It's got all the retro stuff. I don't know. That's my that's my hot take on that. That's why I pretty love it. Weak, pretty weak villain in uh, Winter Soldier too. Like yeah, obviously yeah, yeah. the Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier himself is amazing, yeah. uh, but he's not really the villain. And the guy who becomes the villain, to your point, compared to Hugo Weaving in in uh, in Hydra, not quite the same. I couldn't agree more. Like I don't, I don't know that I put it just in pure entertainment value above Winter Soldier, but mm, uh, that's fair. You really, you really do. But just personal opinion, obviously, yeah, it's yeah. all subjective. But the uh, as a story and how much I cared about the character, I think it is because you really do care about Captain America, yeah. you know, and the way they pulled it off, how he's all skinny and stuff. I mean, I, I, I thought it was really awesome. And uh, what's funny is I've seen all the films and then seeing where I could do this all day, you know, comes from. Obviously, I knew it was something he had been saying in every film, but you got to hear it for the first time. So uh, directed by Joe Johnston. And for the youngsters out there, Joe Johnston was a superstar. Joe Johnston was the very first concept artist that I ever knew of. Him and Ralph McQuarrie. What? Joe Johnston did the incredible pen and ink drawings for the original Star Wars. I don't think he was on Star Wars. I think he came on uh, really at the tail end of that. Might have had a few designs in the original Star Wars. He's an industrial designer by trade. Uh, then he uh worked on did all of the coolest stuff in empire strikes back when you open up an art of star wars and you see those incredible pen drawings more than likely uh those were done by joe johnson i mean ralph mccrory could draw his ass off too and then uh on to return of the jedi from what i understand he then um put his career on hold as a superstar concept artist and designer mm -hmm. film designer for for all of the biggest projects to go back to usc uh george lucas's alma mater and uh, restart his career as a director. He did Rocketeer, oh, and I love he did Rocketeer. The Wolf. Yeah, he did the Wolfman, which was almost awesome. The Wolfman, Wolfman was almost been. awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was. Oh, I just shook my camera. That was. That was really <laughs> almost a really awesome movie. But uh, I'm a I'm a fan of like myself. Joe Johnston came from concept art, so so big fan. But yeah, I thought I thought that movie was uh, was definitely uh, good. I so top three. Yeah, I like your you. top you three. Got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like I like your top three. Endgame has to be there. I mean, the, Endgame the is. yeah, there's some good stuff in there, and um, I really like the original Iron Man. To be honest, I think that's a that's just a I don't know. It's hard. He's so charming. He like is. like Ro Robert Downey Jr.'s character is 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 just so charming. So, and then what would be the third? Um, yeah, I'm what do you get for the, the third one? Because because part of it too is like before Endgame came out, like. Thank God Black Panther came when it did, because I feel like I was having, and this is maybe just me personally, because I know some people at the MCU go so hard to the paint that they're like, they can't get enough of it. Whereas with me, I was like, all right, Tony Stark is amazing. Robert Downey Jr. is incredible. Yeah. But I was getting a little bit of Marvel fatigue. And then Black Panther oh, yeah. felt so fresh. And then Endgame, with having the focus being like, who is the villain in Thanos? Because that is always, okay, this is, another, this is the last rant of the MCU for me, but I will do it right <laughs> here with us together. Tell me how you feel about this. So... I was always like with Ultron and all this other stuff, I'm like, if these guys and girls are all such complete badasses, which clearly they are, like whoever yeah, yeah. comes to F their day up and make it so they all have to combine into the Avengers, I want to know about them. That's the most interesting character in the universe because like it's just yes. one of them. So like finally with Endgame, we got that. Like you got Thanos' actual story and like, the fact yes. that you know that he has like a motivation and that it isn't just purely like I'm a big evil guy from space. It was like I can get and behind a good, this. A good motivation. I, yeah. I really like. Let, let me ask you this just uh, and then we'll get to the video game. I okay, promise. Okay. Chad. The, the uh, is is uh, I is it, do you consider Logan part of the Marvel Universe or I think we're, are we talking question. about Marvel in the world of like the Avengers like that? I think uh, usually, I guess uh, I guess for argument's sake we should keep it in there because because I'd okay. have to put Logan really high up there right yeah. I mean yeah, chat yeah, yeah. like I'd be curious chat what is you think Logan uh, uh, is up there I I think it has to be right but but I, my favorite part of Logan and I think there's just to 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 segue back into Doom and this is with sincerity is um she the the girl uh is. Mm -hmm. Uh, Weapon X is yeah. uh, no, she's not Weapon X. What is she? She's uh, is God, she's the girl from Her Dark Materials. What is her character name in it? Chat, chat, help what us, is the girl? The girl, the girl has like a code name 
X23, is that right? Yeah, X23. X, yes, I think it is. About 34 Smurfs. You're number one. You're first. Thank you for that. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, what I love about her is how cool she is. I mean, yeah. she, and that's such a simple way to put it. But, like, mm -hmm. when she walks out in her intro scene and there's all these characters there that all back up away from her, yeah. you get the sense to feel how powerful she is. Not unlike, you know, I'll tell you, without question, the scenes in Doom Eternal of him walking down the hallway and the scientists all bugging out and all those scenes. Yeah. Absolutely, I looked at that stuff uh, as reference for sure. Nice. Uh, just how to make a character feel. Uh, what, what you take away from that is you learn about a lot about a character in a story by simply how other people react to them. You know, whether it's the Terminator walking into a bar or, you know, uh, X-23 stepping out and everybody backs away, even though they're holding rifles, yeah, yeah, which yeah. I thought was so cool. The one thing about Logan that I wish happened what is it? was there, there was this line that Professor Xavier said to him about female Wolverines. He said something about a female lion would protect uh, you know, the male lion or the elder if she had to. So he said something about you know, uh, be, being a fierce protector and something to do with the claw in her foot. And at the end, when he's lying there and he's about to get taken out by the evil Wolverine, I was like, dive in front of him, whip out your claws and reenact that moment. Like, like, please, like the filmmakers sick. have to do this. And they yes, she protected him. But there wasn't that scene where, like, he's coming in and she dives out in front. I wanted to see that so badly. That would be right. Um, yeah, it, it, it's it's tough with X-Men stuff, because like in Logan, too, it's like. X-Men does so much crazy time travel alt universe stuff these days. Like even in Logan, it's like, yeah, I, I guess Professor X like, like d destroyed half of the world or something like killed half the people in the world. So you're just like, I don't know where we are, but this is a rad movie. That's all I know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's hard totally. to keep up. I'd have to, I, I would be wrong if I didn't give a shout out to my former boss and, and uh, extraordinary uh, owner of Blur Studios and director extraordinaire, Tim Miller. Uh, who directed uh, Deadpool? I, I had the opportunity oh, dude, to work Deadpool. with him, yeah, for many years. So uh, he's he's a he's a cool dude and a talented director. And now my my friends, uh, Dave Wilson, he got to do uh, Bloodshot, and Jeff Fowler, other people from Blur. Now he's doing Sonic. So Damn. it's uh, the, gr the the graduating class of Blur, circa 2010. It was it was a good class. We we all owe a lot to uh, that time we spent there at Blur. It was really that. cool. Like we we got together recently. We talk about it that mm -hmm. like. Yeah, it was, that was a that was an awesome time to, to be at that stu at that studio. And I love um, I love how you we could just be like, what movie did you watch this weekend? And also, how did you know the director? Okay, start with the movie, yeah, and yeah. then we'll get. <laughs> I love that, dude. That's awesome. And it reminds me of like, remember in the good old days of like the late '90s and early 2000s, you had all those music video directors like you know, oh, yeah. uh, Romantic and like uh, 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 Spike Jones and and uh, Michelle Gondry, all these guys that were making like Bjork and Nine Inch Nails videos, and all and it's like. They're making like, uh, you know, eight millimeter. They're making all these like wildly different films. Spike Jones, all those guys. So it's like, I love how you get this group of creatives together. And it's like, you guys make good stuff. And then you all spread out and just like take over all of media for like a decade. <laughs> it's rad, dude. That's really if cool. If you want to see, uh, I think Spike Jones directed this, but her. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I, he did. That that movie is amazing. It's that, so good. That's uh to see to see someone who I think Spike Jones did some jackass stuff, and then to go from that to <laughs> her and all the other things he did, uh, yeah. yeah, and, it's, and it, he, that guy is extraordinarily talented. I mean, it starts uh, with Beastie I, Boy sabotage, and it just goes to her somehow. Yes, at some point. I, I was I was messing with my stand up chair, so I'm okay, right? I can yeah. lower it. What do I, you're perfectly do I need to lower it. No, you're good. Okay. You're great. So, I feel like you've got a uh, sense for it now. It's just like ESP <laughs> with that with that camp. The uh, on video on the video game front mm. got to make some progress gave hollow knight a little break but i will go back to it okay. one of the nice things about hollow knight and and games like that is there is a simplicity to the mechanics that mm -hmm. make it easy easy to return to true uh i i got involved with a little game called carrion which uh, uh yeah, yeah, i have yeah. to say that game is amazing like everybody should go play carrion what an awesome game awesome game uh you know, you get to play as the monster. Like you make a you make a video game that lets you play as the thing monster from 
the John Carpenter film. Yeah. I'm buying I'm buying your game. I'm <laughs> Doesn't buying everything. Matter. I'm buying it. That I, yeah, it could be nothing. If people could tell me it's the worst <laughs> game ever made. I'm telling you, I'll tell you it's the greatest game ever made. But like it's not. It's both the the soundtrack is killer. Yeah. The game is killer. Mechanics, a little challenging, but mm-hmm. that you know, I, I love a challenge. So I mean learning and mastering the mechanics and the movement is 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 definitely a part of the experience. Yeah. Uh, whereas Hollow Hollow Knight is immediately accessible with its mm-hmm. mechanics or a Hades, you know, yeah. you press A, you have success, you You're do doing things. A thing. sure. you, d- you definitely have to learn how to navigate uh, this creature because there's some physics going on, but, but uh, so satisfying, such a, such a awesome, just awesome game. Yeah. And ama- an amazing concept. Like I'm, I'm so inspired. Uh, I've, I've gone down a rabbit hole on steam and I, I just can't get enough of it. I'm, I'm having so much fun. I, was gonna uh, say, I have to play the, the, the... Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, speaking of which, if you have Xbox Game Pass on PC, Carry On is on there. Shout out to Devolver Digital. But you were about to say on your wish list, what was next? Sorry, I think, maybe. So the, so please uh, prepare your eyes to roll when I say this. How awesome is Game Pass? It is awesome. Oh, yeah. Honestly. Game like, Pass is silly. It's like it is. the value in that. It's, it's redonkulous. And again, and, and we're not even a part of Microsoft yet. We're saying we're this not, without any association. I'm, okay? I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not a sellout. I'm just saying it really <laughs> is awesome. Like, like because with, with Carrion, totally what Josh said. I mean, I texted my friends. Dude, this, I mean, they, they've heard of it, of course. Yeah. Going Game Pass, bam, there it is. You know, yeah. like, it, it's just awesome. That's um, sick. So, and, and, but I do need to get on to, I'm going to butcher this name, Valhalla. Oh yeah, yeah. Am I saying that right? Yeah, I yeah. Mean, so far as I know, you're saying it right. Yeah, I know so you're Josh, talking about. Josh, have you messed around with it? I haven't, but uh, Manny, who is in chat, our boy Jitsu, has been bout it, bout it. We were playing something the other day, and he was like, "Give me 30 more minutes. I'm doing a boss right now." But I've I've watched uh, a bunch of streams on it, and yeah, that open world Viking dude, Vikings. I love how there's like yeah. these trends, right? Like we had zombies maybe like four to five, ten, I don't know how many years ago, but it is Vikings right now for sure, right? Like everyone yeah, yeah, are yeah. into them. We've got this, the, there's the television series, there's Assassin's Creed, and now we've got this open world, you know, Rust combined to all these other types of games, survival thing, which is massive, you know, multiplayer, yeah. co-op, all that stuff. So you haven't played it yet, but you're thinking about it. Is that what I'm hearing? I mean, I'm definitely going to play it. Okay. Um, you know, so it's just a matter of when. But uh, yeah, I, I keep hearing uh, the the way that everything works today is I think it's just fantastic. Mm-hmm. Like word of mouth with social media, tweets and all that good stuff. Like yeah. ev- everybody's got a chance to reach an audience now. Mm-hmm. Everybody. And I think it is the it is just a glorious time to be uh, working in our industry, in, in all of the entertainment industries. But of course, I'm biased to games. Of course. But uh, yeah, I, I so and lastly and, and then art. I. <laughs> yes, I, and then I, I swear we'll get to the game. But but lastly, like what game? This is the this is the truth. Like I was talking about it with my friend last night, mm-hmm. who, who's who works at uh, Riot, and and it's like when the inf- the impact of games right now and where they're at. When I hear that they announced the the Dune movie, right? Yes. I I, I can't. Josh, tell me the truth. You can't tell me that you like. I kind of wish you'd make the game. You oh, know, like one thousand percent. And and the right. That's the hope, right? Is that. The movie with, you know, Timothy Chalfant and Oscar Isaac and all these other people, it comes out, it's amazing. And then they're like, we have, why have we not booted up the IP again for a game? Like there's so many different potential things you could do with the game. You could do an RTS, you could do a first person, you could do a survival. How is a survival game not Dune already? Like a massive multiplayer survival game. I mean, Dune is survival. The whole damn thing is out there in the desert. No, totally. And chat, what would you, um, I mean, what would you want to see? I I think... Yeah, probably like an open world uh, third person something, but like I'm seeing Dune Royale already being thrown out. <laughs> <laughs> Dune Royale, sure. That would actually Dune Royale with sandworms. Chat, that would be sick. That would Come be on, nuts. that that would be nuts. But but uh, to get to play in the still suits, you know, uh, I I just suits, it's, it's so tight. I, but but don't don't it, please whoever's listening, no one is that would have <laughs> anything to do with this. But like don't. Don't half-ass the movie. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. the game. Like, make it a real game. Like, you know, a a a top tier CD Projekt Red. You know, Bethesda. Like, awesome. I'm talking cream cream of the crop, open world experience. You're saying you're saying I, don't make it that like LGN. Like, we got the Friday the Thirteenth no. license, and we we threw a skin over a game that maybe is the game that you wanted because <laughs> yeah. it has the name and it looks like the same title you remember from the movie. Yeah, yeah. No, you want the legit like. From the top down, like real publisher AAA experience Absolutely. with something like a big IP like that, that would be amazing. 
It yeah. would be amazing. And then, and then second on that list would be not a movie, but a series. I mean, not give, give me the, give me the right, give, yes. me, the, give me the series. Yeah. I mean, I know they did that before, but like, you yeah. know, the, the 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 landscape has changed. So I true, just think true. that like, uh, yeah, I mean, CG has come movie. so far since the last time they tried that. That would be nuts. I'm psyched for the movie, but and and uh, I saw an interesting thing on Facebook, and I have to agree with this. Uh, it was what like some uh, an Onion article where like <laughs> so, some some person you know uh, tries for the sixth time to read the Dune series, and uh, <laughs> yeah, because I've I've tried Listen, those names, I, I, those names, bro, in those places. I I've opened it up. I've tried. I'm like I I can't do this. Like you're I, like, I, I you're like, like Paul Moadib of a trigger. You're yeah. like where. Where do I, I like, find the dictionary for what the F I'm reading? No, I know. There's a lot. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's dense. It's really dense. But it's the desert. It's got to be dense. It's sand. It is. It's everywhere. <laughs> no, but it yeah, is. like, I still will stand behind my... You know I'm a huge David Lynch fan, and, like, I yeah. love what David Lynch did with it. I mean, Kyle MacLachlan. Oh. Love Kyle MacLachlan. And, like, using Sting, the way they did Harkonnens, like, dude, that movie holds up. And I know that it was, like, his biggest fail in the sense that, like... Uh, you know, what's his nuts? Oh, Jesus, God. Oh, God. Blazing Saddles. What's his name? Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks yeah. found and discovered David Lynch from Eraserhead. He he uh, got him to direct Elephant Man with, of course, Anthony Hopkins, which is an incredible film. Right? An, an incredible film. Yeah. The chat, if you want to watch an incredibly moving film that I think completely holds up, but, yeah. you know, be prepared. It's black and white and it's mm -hmm. old. But, like, uh, it was also shot to look old when he made it. Like, yeah. obviously, it wasn't made in black and white times. But, like... Watch the Elephant Man, incredible movie. Yeah, John Hurt, Anthony but, Hopkins. But keep keep, keep going. Oh, you but saying. but then he got you know it was like that. That's like that. That's like the way, right? Like it'd be like this guy, David Lynch. He's this weirdo. We don't know who he is. He's made this this amazing film that was up for you know uh, an Oscar for an Academy Awards for Elephant Man. I think I think it's the year that Timothy Hutton won for Ordinary People. But anyways, I don't know a lot about dates, but I do know Ordinary People because that movie is also amazing. But anyways. So then they give him the helm of this giant budget film. And you got to realize David Lynch, like three years ago, was making oh, yeah. Elephant, I mean, was making uh, Eraserhead with his friends for like $1,000. And then he has like yeah. millions of dollars to make this, <laughs> this movie Dune, which is like this insanely dense, huge world epic movie. And I think he did an amazing job, but some people, amazing I mean, job. it's a very mixed opinion on that film on Dune. Some people love it, some people hate it. it ha yeah, I'm like you. Like yeah. I, I, I worship that guy, yeah. and uh, I still think Blue Velvet is one of the best films I've ever seen. Uh, and and like Dune, I loved it as a kid. I love it now. Yeah, it, it's it's uh, it's a style, and definitely the effects were bad in the '80s. They're bad now, so yeah. it was never good. It was no. never considered good. But yeah. but uh, some of his ideas and the way that he approached things was so fresh and new. And yeah, as Josh said, like it, he was a true artist. I mean, mm -hmm. if you watch Eraserhead you don't get major blockbuster science fiction movie from that guy. So yeah. credit to the people who gave him an opportunity because, uh, yeah, th he's still awesome too, David oh, yeah. Lynch, you know, just smoking away with his, with making his, uh, as he always says, the art life. I mean, every uh, day I that <laughs> guy goes to like Bob's Big Boys, I don't know if he's doing it now in Corona, <laughs> yeah. has like a milkshake and like probably a raw hamburger and he just sits yeah, there did. and smokes cigarettes as much as you can <laughs> in LA anymore. But like, you got to love the consistency and you got to love the fact that like, very few people, so many people try to emulate his style, but like he has this weird visceral connection to make you feel uncomfortable. And it's such a cool yes. thing. And it sounds so weird to say it's cool to make someone feel uncomfortable, but it's really not easy to do. Even in film where you have like all the tools that you have for how you can present things with sound design and with shots and everything else. But like, yeah, Twin Peaks, the original again, I don't know if there's, I don't think there'll ever be a greater TV series, even after television's got so good. But if you want to know why television got good and why television could be shot like a film, it's because of Twin Peaks from like the early 90s, because that guy set the standard on like, what if something was film quality, but was actually on TV? Because at the time, like nothing existed like that in no, any no. way. But also, he, go ahead, sir, sir. He could put you in a trance, yeah. uh, to your point, like with, with, some of his scenes uh, sure. a lot of you know in every one of his films just just amazing speaking really, of a really trench amazing. and a trench i think we might be in one and we got to go to mars because i'm pretty sure mars core Let's is the way it. so are we ready all right so if you're just joining us now uh that was the film and catch-up portion of the yes the stream and now we are back into where we left off which again this is chapter seven this is mars yeah. core we're on the fortress of doom first of course so walk us through what we're doing yes. where we're at 
I don't know. I'm gonna hit A here <laughs> and, okay. and see and see where we're at. Uh, we're still on nightmare. Let me get my sound right. Oh no! I say little, oh no. Little, we we got him out of there. He's safe. <laughs> little little joke chat. Uh, when we were recording this stuff, we had a good time with the percentages. We would always be like 68.5 percent of the demonic invasion. That that's a joke. Those, that was meant to be a joke with how specific he is. So he puts uh, he puts Doctor Hayden in his ship, but uh, yeah, that's a, that's an interesting thing. And as as we will learn, uh, Mister Hayden uh, knows how this how this ship works uh, because he was he was a part of the. Uh, can I say that yet? Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say. That. I can't say that. So we know he. I I get confused. You all know he's a maker, right? Because you played DLC, so right. I'm spoiling it. Yeah. He's a maker. You're right, right, right. Um, Lifelong Soma is asking, this is a perfect time to ask this question from chat. Are you guys playing through the Ancient Gods? Not right now. Right now we are playing through the base campaign beat, of the game. I'll beat the Super Gorness Master level in the Ancient Gods in an evening on Nightmare with a base controller. Don't even get me started. I will show you all how it's done. Did you hear somebody write that down and bring that back? Because we're gonna need that later when we're like, we never said that. We would never no. say that's crazy to say. We would never say. <laughs> oh, that. I, I, I definitely, I would love to do that. The, uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll do, we'll do the master levels later. I. So, uh, what's interesting now? Now, by the way, with with our hub being what it is, yeah. Uh, throughout the pace of the game, you know, uh, probably people, what we what we want is, uh, you know, we make this is a PVE. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it, it is a skill-based action game, so mm -hmm. we really need the players to feel pushed, so that way they're motivated to upgrade their characters, because that has meaning to them, because they're like, God damn, man, I got my butt kicked the last level. Yeah. So they pick up a bunch of batteries, and they come back here, and I don't really care about upgrades, mods. And I already have these. So what else do I need, Josh? I need You've the other the ones. You've got the coins already. I think, are they the ones I, that I know are, where like, they are off in the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The so outside I'll go ones. get those. Okay. I want to upgrade my character, and I have to because we're on nightmare now. So we're not we're not messing around, sort of. I got an interesting question for you. This is coming from chat. This is from Mira Kulos six six six. The question is this: Question for Hugo. Why was Australia remained un? Or I think they mean why did why did Australia remain untouched by the demonic evasion? Because when they show where the demonic evasion is, Australia is completely fine. What's up with that? So am I correct in saying that G-Man lives and Spud Hunter are from Australia? Is you are, that, my, you are right? my friend. You are my friend. All right. So, so that's why. Because those guys are so badass <laughs> that the demons showed up and, and they left. That's it. Spud, oh. Spud, Spud just quick switched them into the ground. <laughs> and, and, uh, and that was it. And, and, uh, and, and G-Man critiqued them so badly <laughs> that they were like, I, I can't I feel bad about myself and, and they left. He's like, is this is this the best demon onslaught you have? Is this it? <laughs> That's Three right. out of ten. That's the way. <laughs> right back to the US and Asia and Europe and wherever else. Doesn't matter. I we love, love that. those guys. Thank yeah. you, you know, so much. We really appreciated yep. the uh, the reviews. Always honest, always sincere. That's yep. what we want to see. That's right. We would we would expect nothing else from you guys and um and the dedication, and yeah. Devo, Spot Hunter, there's so many. And they're out yes. there every day slaying. That's what they do. That's how they live. It's amazing. That is what they do. So, Filled with Doom Slayers. That's right. That's a great so question. So, Josh, mm. obviously we have a uh, you know, big surprise. We're going to fight the Dark Lord. Everybody knows that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, we don't have to give anything away. We could talk a little bit, though. We're talking about Ancient Gods Part 2 now, by the way. This is the unreleased yeah, yeah. DLC, the it's second in, one. It's in development, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, all day mm -hmm. today we've been we've been working on it. And Josh got to play test the Dark Lord boss fight. I did. And and a little bit unbalanced, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> could could use could use a little bit more uh, could use a little bit tightening on Nightmare. Josh is really good, so when when, when I. I get a chance with Josh to be able to take a sample of like what top tier players will think because Josh is amazing at the game. And um, yes, you heard him say it, it wasn't me, so it isn't bragging. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, we a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. We're probably too far, to, too too far in the difficult territory when it comes to Nightmare. Mm -hmm. But uh, Ultra Violence is feeling good. Yeah, that that's for sure. But Nightmare, yeah, yeah. little little too tight. 
And it's one of those, it's such a tough balance in the thing, right? Because we had talked about, we've talked about this a lot in the last couple of days, but it's one of those things where it's like, you, if you're playing Nightmare, you expect to, and you kind of want to die on certain occasions, right? Like if you're doing, if you're doing like the equivalent of like a really, really tough arena, if you're on a boss fight you've never fought before, especially if it's like maybe the final boss, maybe who knows where it lands in the game, but it's one of those things where you expect to die and you want to die, but you still want to know just like every encounter in this base game and in the Ancient Gods Part 1, that when you die, you know what you did wrong, you know how to correct it, and you can work on it and make those adjustments, you know what I mean? Like it's such a fine balance thing to, like you guys took a huge risk when you made Eternal, we've talked about this before, like you want people to die and you want them to know when they die what they could do yeah. differently right it's, it's like teaching in a different way than just going like here's a th thousand tutorials we're going to hold your hand you're never fully dead all that kind of stuff like talk yeah, to us about I, that decision like how did that work well honestly it's it's it, because we didn't want to we felt like that's what players wanted i mean we didn't it's it's kind of uh betting on the players uh desire to play something that was worth their time like you don't want to spend sixty dollars for walk down the hallway and shotgun go boom i mean like right. there's plenty of that in doom i mean i think that's good but i think players when you look at the success of multiplayer games and games like league of legends or like these just big giant games like warzone and fortnite and yeah. really anything not even a lot of people will reference like dark souls i mean there's if you think dark souls is the only hard game out there uh go go play warzone right now yeah. tell, tell me how it goes <laughs> you know like right so players want depth in in their in their skill-based gaming they want depth in their gaming period so it, i have to pause for this because i'm passionate about this and say it, um say it. and sorry if you know you, i'm gonna mute because there's like a siren going on <laughs> what we what we see is that there is an opportunity we make a kind of a unique game in the single player uh landscape you know games of our kind when you think of single player games a lot of them are narratively focused but there's not a lot of skill-based single-player first-person shooter games anymore. What the original Doom offered isn't really offered today. Most of the uh, FPS single-player games, they're either co-op, which is great, but they're also more like looter shooters. So it's it's power through progression. You know, like level your character up, point your gun at the character and shoot. I'm level 30, so I'm doing a lot of damage. I love those games. It, it's it. But as we always say, like as as your as your skill skill requirement goes down, your content has to go up. So we are not making a looter shooter. And in, in the spirit of, like, these FPS competitive games, these PvP games, mm -hmm. it is skill. It, it is skill that makes you powerful. So what about offering fans, you know, like the original Doom? And I'm talking about the Doom without the, the cheat codes, the IDKFA and all that stuff. I, I mean, like, the original Doom without cheat codes yeah. was a skill-based PvE. And, um, and offering that to players where they could get that sense of competition, that rush... Uh, of that adrenaline rush of, of playing a high level FP, skill based FPS, but in a PVE format where I can control the challenge to exactly what it is I want, which I think is is what Doom is all about. And don't ins I can't stand when games insult my intelligence, where they're just right. like, it's like, dude, bring it on. You can yeah. you can challenge me. That it's why when you play a Demon Souls, or or honestly, credit to like look at a Fortnite. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like. When, I, if, when you see, I show you videos of my son playing that game. I mean, they're they're not taking it easy on him. I mean, they're <laughs> yeah, they're ask, true. you know, good games ask a lot of you. It's mm -hmm. okay to ask a lot of a player and don't insult their intelligence. It's it's what they want, uh, it, and people want it in different forms. I mean, sure. again, a, a looter shooter is more of like an exchange of time. I'm going to level up my character power through progression. That's awesome, but you got to bring the depth, and those games do, but they bring it in their own way, and so I think. Shotgun go boom, like dumb card or shooter. I, I don't think that's what, you know, people want. I know. And, and I think you have to trust the audience instincts there and, and, uh, and have the guts to give them something good, you know? Uh, and that's, that's ultimately what we really wanted to do with Doom Eternal. And the end result is, you know, it is, it is, uh, I don't want to go into specifics, but it is definitely, uh, extremely successful for us and, and, and has a, a fantastic attach rate, especially when you compare it to Doom 2016. The proof is in the pudding. You're playing right. more of you are playing it. You're playing it longer. You're playing it more often. There's just a larger community that spawned around it. So for Doom sure. 2016 was kind of like the, the beginnings of the game, but we chipped away the rough edges and, and, and pulled out of that, extracted out of that, you know, really uh, what we wanted to make all along. We, we played this game in 2016, the problem, there was a lot of imbalances and things in there. 
that that made it too easy to kind of fall out of the fun zone and it really didn't seem very competitive satisfying i mean it's satisfying to run around and shoot people with a shotgun but um <laughs> again just but, ask but they more proved players. that in 93 it's, it's, right it, like yeah exactly yeah 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 absolutely so so uh yeah eternal is 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 more successful uh than than we had that we had hoped it's, it's fantastic and um we're just we're, we couldn't be more excited so yes that's that was the goal was to provide players with the experience they deserve and and uh and it's also a huge testament i think to the team that you guys built up between 2016 and eternal right yeah. like you guys got you had talented people and it grew more and more and more because because you had 2016 under your belt i think that was like also just one of those calling cards for everybody in the gaming industry especially like the young up-and-comers and some vets to be like how do i get on this team exactly how do i exactly. how do i help make a doom i want to do that you know what i mean oh yeah we we were able to it's a really good point in order to achieve this game you, you need the game is really really focused mm -hmm. like you'll notice that that it's just has a razor sharp focus it's uncompromising look we're going to give you the tutorials you have difficulty settings we have a million things that we could do and that's not to say it's the, not the perfect game i mean sure. there i you know i i love 2016 i Same. was a director on 2016 i'm very proud of it you were but like <laughs> uh after after coming you know you, you look back on it, you see the flaws. Same with Eternal. There's plenty of things we can improve with Eternal. But, like, the thing we're most proud of is how focused it is. And you'll you'll see that uh, in order to pull something off like that, you really have to have a team that works well together. So it is it is a testament to the incredible staff and team that we have at id Software that we were able to even do some of the stuff. Because it that, it takes a level of coordination that's not, not easy to pull off. Yeah, um, every, every gun, every decision... Everything you do in Doom is is it feels connected to another part of the combat loop, and the combat loop constantly uh, wraps in on itself, you know. And and it, anything you know, once you get into the flow and you learn its ways, and then you really unlock a level of power that I think far exceeds walk down the hallway and shoot people with shot. That's not power. That's lazy power. I right. I, I don't want that. You know, like personally, uh, we I think there's it, it it has to be something where it's like once you get there i control the chaos you know mm -hmm. the it, it essentially becomes the chaos is controlling me in the beginning and then after a while once i get good enough i am the conductor of this action film i am the center of the storm and and the chaos revolves around me i create it which is uh and i'm in control of it that is so satisfying that is my favorite part i really like our game that, uh, that, <laughs> did you know that <laughs> did you guys chat yeah. did you know that are you aware? No, it's a good point though, because it's like it's not just that progression of like bigger gun go bigger boom. You know what I mean? No. It's it's that no. they become tools and the tools have specific purposes because of the way you guys built the AI. And then all of a sudden when you're doing these combos, it's such a different power fantasy in being able to like you say, like you so perfectly put, like the way that you can control the chaos and the way that the chaos isn't just like I pulled the the nest, the super gore nest thing, you know, like the, the gore nest from, from Doom twenty sixteen and now there's you know, six demons, and then I kill those, and there's four more. It's like, it is and a, a crazy and orchestration a in Eternal. It's and, so different. And a game, a game with a high skill ceiling. You know, like that's that's what I want. And yeah. PVE, like I, the idea that I get to control it, you know, yeah. entirely. I could I could dial that challenge in, relatively speaking, to about what it is I need. I think the difference is is that Doom Doom Eternal from Doom 2016 does require that you be precise under pressure. You know, when it comes to shooting off weak points. That is the one major difference, is that we do ask you to have precision under pressure. Which yeah. you know, if you, if you play any kind of FPS, uh, th they ask you of that. But yeah, that's kind of what I, you sign I, up I, for. I think that is with my son or myself. That is the addiction that I have to some of the competitive multiplayer oh, games. For sure, is the, the you know the, the just mastering the mechanics just enough to be able to get that micro microsecond edge mm -hmm. on my competition. And and here I get to do it in the comfort of of just amongst you know uh, AI. So. I don't need to be trolled online after I, after I <laughs> The <laughs> imps don't send you a, a salty message after they've just like all That's teamed right. up on you and thrown fireballs at you. They're like, learn to dodge, bro. And you're like, come on. Who That's programmed we should this? Have, like, we should have the demons troll you. Like, be like, get good, bro. <laughs> no, it's a good uh, point, the, though, because like you can actually, because they're predictable in whatever you know uh, level you're playing, in whatever skill level you're playing, you can actually get better. You can actually improve. You can make those gains that you can't sometimes make in multiplayer well, because that human factor is such a random factor. You don't know who you're going to get. You know so, what I mean? And, and the satisfaction 
from an, a good action game is you can feel yourself getting better. Mm -hmm. And chat, I've, I've heard a lot of this from you guys in chat, but hopefully you agree, is that, uh, you know, Doom makes you better at FPS. I mean, Eternal Eternal makes you better at FPS. You could feel yourself uh, getting better as you play it, which which is, uh, which is something that I find satisfying. Um, oh, yeah. By the way, for those that need it, I would ha I would recommend that everybody knows what these what these mods are. Yeah. Um. That's the thing. I was I was when we first started this. I'm so used to presenting the game uh, to people who don't know what it is. Right. And and uh, what I noticed after a couple of epi uh, streams. You can call them episodes. Like, it's fine. You can call it a podcast. You can call it whatever you want. That's <laughs> what we're doing. Yeah. After 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 a stream, I noticed that it's like, yeah, man, everybody who I'm talking to knows how to play this game. Right. So let's let's focus on the on the good stuff. This was uh, this level was made by Brandon Souders. He was the level designer, uh, and I believe Brandon did the gameplay as well. Again, we have we have level designers and gameplay combat designers, and sometimes they do both. Nice. And sometimes they'll they'll share the load. Uh oh. Uh. And and um, Brandon Souders is a beast. Big beast, oh right in the nick of time that <laughs> extra life shows up. I think that's our last one, so gotta gotta be precious now. See, perfect use. Ooh, I love. Oh uh, my god! How the carcass is out there doing what the carcass does and blocking those right. glory I, kills. I, I, I forgot <laughs> that I have to actually take this uh, seriously. Semi seriously, semi. Because you know that's the funny thing. We talk about this a lot too. Is we we started this uh, this series uh, playing on Hurt Me Plenty, so Hugo could do the talkie and the shooty at the same time because it is not easy. But the funny thing is, is last week we turned up the difficulty to Nightmare, and you play significantly better when the challenge is better. But that's just another one of those things. It's like because yes. you're trained also to play at this level. When you start to play, it, it's like how uh, a lot of football teams, like let's take the New Orleans Saints. They're a great team if they play another great team. If they play a crap team, they will play crap. Like it's just, it's a natural thing. I think that you get used to the competition. And so when you're playing a nightmare, you get used to just being like, this is the normal speed of things. This is how I react. This is like my quick switch. And you start to just dial these things. And sometimes when you play in lower skill levels, from playing from a higher one, it's actually harder because it starts to trip up your timing on things. So we just need to return back to nightmare and that's where we're at. So we're in a good place. So you just wrecked that area. We're good now. Where the hell did that guy go? He's gone. Maybe he... Oh, there we... How yeah. is he gone? <laughs> You're like somebody... Oh, we, I, know, I know why, because... Yeah. Because I walked I walked up here. Yeah, and you triggered the, the next set of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. soldiers coming out. Soundtrack kicking it. All right, so, this is a so good area. This, this area was was uh, something we worked on right up to the end, guys. We're just trying to do our best to dial in the challenge for you. And uh, and just like BFG shots popping off, we're in UAC. We're outside. I love this area. Yeah, I love one, this fight. One, I love the one of the things. Yeah, cre create that sense of uh, of scope and cinema. You know, Josh. I gotta be honest. I think we're doing it better. In the DLCs. Oh in yeah, 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 yeah. In, in particular, particular in, the, in part two. In particular, DLC two. I gotta stop talking. We gotta focus. We gotta focus. <laughs> you gotta take out that <laughs> dread knight. No, I love this area though because you get a pain elemental, you get a dread knight, and then you get. See, I always forget that you don't actually get a doom hunter here because I'm so used to the master level version of this because that's what I play most often now. But still, with the pain elemental and the dread knight and all the ads, it's easy to get tripped up. But yeah, no, you're, you're totally right. I mean, that was a huge difference, right? The difference between 2016 and Eternal. Like, we keep talking about the differences. Like, the scope and scale, even in the base game here that you're seeing right in front of you, it's like, look at these crazy set pieces of things that are popping off all around you in the middle of this chaos that we are having a tough time I, because, you know what? Because we're just showing people that it's okay today. That's why we're doing uh, it. That was, doing it on that purpose. Was <laughs> that was lame. He's doing it for you guys, okay? Every time he dies, uh, a demon gets his that's, wings. Maybe a, a right. I guess a, a, a gargoyle gets his wings. I got a question for you here. Speaking of the Ancient Gods Part 2, the next and last piece of the Doom Saga. The question is for Hugo. This is from Moonfire Madeer. Shoutouts, because that's Zeus54 on Twitter. An absolute legend of uh, all Doom fan art and just art in general and an aspiring monster in the creation stages right now. Question for Hugo. How quickly into DLC 2 does the Dark Lord get his given clothing? 
because he is pretty shirtless uh, yes. <laughs> at the end of DLC one, uh, Ancient Gods Part One. So, uh, pretty pretty quick, I'd say. <laughs> That's uh, a great question. Yeah, the, I I will say that he he is a little uh, he's a little naked in the beginning. That That's is fair. that That's is fair. accurate. Yeah. You know, uh, when you spawn back into first. existence, sometimes you don't get your full, you know, uh, Sunday yes. best. You know what I mean? Your suit and tie. I think, uh, what do we want to invest in? Uh, I like remote detonate. Let's just max out remote detonate. Okay. Or should we max out? I know that you like lock, lock on. on dude, lock on is just so much damage. It's just like, and especially sometimes when you're, when, you know, we're chatting it up and you're just like, I need to get rid of this piece that's on the board. Sometimes just lock on, yes. lock on, lock on. And when you get that thing fully upgraded so it's fast, it can just be a cyber demon killer or tyrant to some. It can just yes. wreck stuff. Okay, I've got that. I've got that. Uh, what else do I need? Nothing. I'm good. I think we're looking pretty All good right. on the upgrade scale. All right, let's take it seriously. Right, I, don't, it. I don't want to die. This is, this is for real this time. Well, it's embarrassing to die on this because I'm used to playing master levels <laughs> yeah that's it look when you're when you're on gen x uh you just it's a different caliber of player really i mean the guy's playing on it, an inverted it controller he's basically handicapping himself as many times and places as he can he's not even using the new xbox controllers which he loves which have the back paddles he's using the vanilla guys this is the old I school original og I, i'm using the the series x the Whichever Series X2 or something, but I'm not. I, yeah, I took the parts off. Oh, okay, I see, I see. Oh, okay, we still have a Doom Hunter here. I forgot it was also in base. I feel like he wants an Ice Bomb, and then he wants a Blood Punch, and then he wants a Super Shock and Blister. I'm just, yes, I'm not he, directing from the other seat. I'm just saying that's what he wants. Yes, he told me. He called he me does. last night, and he's like, Look, when Hugo gets close, here's, what, here's the combination that I want. I was like, All right, I didn't know I, Doom Hunters could talk that, and that was their voice, I, but that's what it sounded like. I agree. Okay. I need it. All right, here we go. Bam. 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 Super shotgun. There we go. Off the sled. Off the sled. Little burn. And he's gone. And, and he's, he's gone. gone. It's a winter wonderland. Yeah. He didn't even have time to sled. He got knocked right off it. GG's. That's it. That's it. That's what you're looking for. All right. Got the flame belch back. Ooh, weapon point too. Nice. I love those points too. It's one of those weird little trigger things where you're like, I just did a tough fight. It felt good, and it's nice to get rewarded with a uh, with a little oh, wait, bit of no. a. Yeah, you got to go back up there. How do I go back up there? Can you though? Just fall I off and die. Fall I off can. and die. Fall off and die. Fall off and die. Will it put All you right. back up there? Yes. I yes, do. it will. Turn around. Nice. Okay, there we go. Yee. There we go. Got to get it. Got to get it. This is for back at the, the Fortress of Doom. We're gonna want this for an upgrade for later. Yes. But yeah, I love that when those encounters end, those like tough ones that kind of stretch out like your ability, you just get that nice little weapon point and you're like, okay, I will be stronger based on the fight I just had. This feels right, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just like rewarding. This feels good. There used to be a, there used to be a secret in here. The, the, these used to have glass over them and you would break it and pull uh, a secret out of there. Nice. Do you remember what it was? Was it just something that we put somewhere else? Like a collectible? Uh, like a crater suit point? No. Pro yeah, actually we put it in here. So oh yeah, the one up top, up. right? Yeah. Nice. I like too how there's, because of that, there's like the smaller pistons that you see before you walk into this room and then the bigger pistons that you can actually use as like points to double jump on. Again, shout out, it's Brandon yes. that did this level, right? Brandon Souders. Brandon Souders. Shout outs, because this level is toy. He is a, yeah, so chat, I know a lot of you love to debate. It kind of comes down to, uh, which level you think is the best. I know mm. this one's really up there on a lot of people's list Yeah. of, of the best levels. Oh yeah, this the, one is- The music is sick. Music is really, really good. Shout outs to Mick and Chad all the way across the sky. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. A couple of questions, I'm gonna hit you with some while you're in the midst of this fight right here with the Prowler who's coming in hot. Oh. Oh, that was a quick one. But you have that rune attached, so they're all going to be quick ones. <laughs> all right. So the question is from Brit86i. Would you ever make a female slayer in the future? I thought about it, actually. Yeah. Because um, I think I think if, if we did it, uh, I'd want it to be lethal. You know, uh, I, I think it's interesting how it would impact the glory kills, the kind of weapons. Uh, uh, that she would have mm -hmm. the the fighting style, 
Uh, certainly all aggression, absolutely, but, the, you know... Um, a different I touch, just think though, huh? A diff yeah, a different type of aggression. I, I would really strive to, to allow it to impact the gameplay in a way that was meaningful. Um, I like that. I like that a lot. Okay. Yeah, I've definitely put a lot of thought into that, actually. But, <laughs> no, uh, I like it. You're like, it's it's five different games. We're working on three of them right now, but the fourth one is going to be that. <laughs> I love it. That's a great answer. Okay. Next yeah, question. I, Go ahead. No, no. Was there more? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. It, I, it's it's uh, t totally, when you, when it comes to designing the action, mm -hmm. you know, you, you think about, like, uh, you know, if the Slayer is a, is a Ferrari, well, then what would a female Slayer be? What would... Uh, what would a medieval slayer be off you know like how would you how would that affect things you know yeah, like yeah, yeah. what 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 sort of uh, analogies could you draw from that and allow that to influence the experience um so i don't know it, it's uh it definitely would be cool that is very cool i'm already seeing uh people pop off i'm thinking about like i'm already thinking about lamborghini myself but like we have so many car aficionados in chat too i'm sure we're gonna see some suggestions for that um apparently i'd, I'd love to do uh, uh a wolfenstein game where he is uh, the uh, 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 BJ's last mission, like it basically Ooh. kind of like what they did with uh, the Dark Knight Returns, the comic, where it would be like an old BJ, like a broken uh, down, like no but he's F's huge. given. Okay, okay. Yeah, like like a the final mission, one last mission. You I know? like that. And uh, like like kind of how like the Dark Knight is just grizzled. Yeah. And, and, and if anybody's ever wanted, wants to read a really amazing comic book or just rent. They made an animated film of it. Mm -hmm. The Dark Knight Returns is yeah. is truly a classic and worth your time. But if you don't, if you're not familiar with it, uh, it's it's like uh, an older Bruce Wayne who basically goes back for one last mission, and he's huge. That's the coolest part. Is like he's yeah. not skinny and athletic. He's like no. a tank, and he's and his jacked. Batmobile. And so many of the Bat films, uh, Bat films, the Batman. Movies, <laughs> I like that. Just Bat call him Bat films. Then. <laughs> yeah, why not? So, so many of the Batman movies have mm -hmm. have uh, have used. Um, the Dark Knight Returns as, as an influence. Yeah. So I always just thought it would the, the, the general concept of like the final mission of blank. So I, I just think like a a massive 280 pound BJ Blazkowicz, mm -hmm. you know, old. I, there's something about like. I mean, Logan kind of has a bit of that too, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, I like how you're just fighting them. You're like, there's a buff totem. I didn't notice because I'm just wrecking everything in front of me. Is it buff? Yeah. I, I'm sorry, I didn't notice that. And now it's catching up. Oh, God. That Hell Knight will make sure you know. Ooh, but Frozen. Love to see it. Frozen 3. You're seeing it right here in front of you. All right. I have to stop showing you. You need to let it go. Yeah, you, you need to go get that I, buff we, total. We, we, we were going to try to be cool, chat. There's no being cool. Like, let's just get rid of this uh, thing. I love it. Uh, so, so a little, a little new, uh, update on the uh, no target bug. Mm -hmm. some, of the, some of the no target bug is uh, what we found out is a result of how we addressed another bug, which was sometimes if you uh, if you went to Chainsaw and AI while he was doing a traversal, right. you would actually get stuck at Geo as a result. So yeah. some of what you were feeling, whoa. Oh, I was looking to say, uh, I was like, really? The BFG for the CACO, this is different, I like this. But no, what you're saying is- Some it's... of what you're feeling is, Actually, you, that what we did to correct it is we said, look, when the AI is doing a, a traversal, mm -hmm. you know, you can't, uh, you can't chainsaw it. I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time talking and doing this. No, you're doing it. But, uh, and that created a lot of instances and fail cases where people feel like they should have done it. I feel like the director of the game should have known that <laughs> and, and not agreed to, uh, not, to not, not said, hey, to, not not said, yeah, yeah, we should just do that because that was. Uh, but that it's was incorrect. <laughs> but we we may or may not have a fix that's coming uh, with the Ancient Gods Part Two. We may we may oh, have yeah. addressed it. Who knows? Uh, probably yeah, we no, did. I, er, yeah, early word is it's fixed. Mm -hmm. You know that that it was it wasn't just that it was a couple of things. Yeah. And and uh, and we fixed it. I also feel like in fighting seems like it's not turning off. That's something. Mm. It's They're just going me. at each other. Oh my God. That whippy. Now I'm not going to say you have to use rock, uh, <laughs> rocket launcher. You have to use rocket launcher lock on for the whiplashes, but I also am telling you that they're built for it. So if they become a pest, which they always are whenever they're on the board, I love the lock on rocket for whiplashes. But I think that you're out of ammo now, so you're gonna have to take them on mono e, e lady here. So let's see. Ooh, ooh, there we go. 
I oh. like to. Yeah, what's your strat for them? Oh, freeze them up. DPS. Okay, all right. You made him frozen dinner, basically. Easy. I like yeah, that. I like I like to freeze him. I mm -hmm. uh, don't. I there there. Derek Heidi, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, lead marketing extraordinaire, brand manager um, of the century. Go on. Shout out. He to Derek. does not like to use ice bomb. I remember when he played the ancient gods. Yeah. He gave me a report and he said it's too hard. And uh, I said, uh, you know, all right, let me see. Like I asked him, like, are you using all the tools? He's like, yeah. And then like he used an ice bomb. Oh, he asked me about the barons. So uh, a little, little, little story about the ancient gods. Mm -hmm. So obviously the ancient gods. Everything I said in the beginning, that whole rant about not insulting the player's intelligence and giving something worth their time and mm -hmm. blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. uh, the ancient gods then has to deliver on top of that and you know and and uh, and and give something satisfying to that core audience. Well, the reason why there's three barons and and oh my god, you just put me in a hallway with a tyrant is because if you know how to lose, <laughs> if you know how to use the tools, mm -hmm. you could delete a, a baron in like a second. It's, it's yeah. called the ice bomb and a basic quick switch combo, or ice bomb grenade, or ice bomb blood point. I mean, yeah. there's, there's like a million things you could do to a baron. So that's why you see like two and three uh, barons uh, in the ancient gods. So when Derek was playing, he was a little bit like, dude, give me He's a break. Like, Come on, what are we doing? And, yeah, like what? Why is this like this? Like, <laughs> what have you done? And I asked him. Can't I was like, do you, I was like, do you use the ice bomb? He's like, no. I'm like, you beat you beat the game on Nightmare <laughs> and did a serious run on Ultra Nightmare, and you don't use the ice bomb. He's like, no. Like so. You're like, damn. Literally, literally, 24 hours later, he's just like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's fair because it's like you know everybody has their different play style, and I know that like shout out to. Swan Song does a ton of videos uh, where he'll play master levels and he'll be like, no BFG, maybe no ice bomb. He'll like limit himself from these things so that he can make the run that much more difficult because he's so used to already using all the tools in the in the, the tool shed, as it hey, were, for the arsenal. I think ice bomb's OP. We're not going to change it. But yeah. if, if you want to know my critiques of, of the game right now as the dust settles, mm -hmm. uh, I'd love to. I think so. All right, let's go through the list of all stuff right. that that I think could be better. Actually, some of this is going to get addressed uh, in the DLC. Mm -hmm. I think I think the Arachnotrons are a little bit active. Like, they're supposed to teach you weak points to start, and most players annihilate them, you know, yeah. pop off the weak point. But I do think that, like, um, allowing the cadence of the way they move, later AIs that we designed, mm -hmm. they would move with a sense of purpose to allow you opportunities to shoot them. So I they kind of like pause yeah. and then move. And the Arachnotron was just one of the first AI that we designed for the weak point system. And we learned a lot since then. So I'd like to revisit him and just kind of, you know, t uh, tune up some of his animations to allow you to shoot him in those moments, which it won't affect good players and it'll just get more uh, first timers on board with weak points. So like with being like, I need to take care of that laser cannon on that. that but I don't have count. to do it with it shooting at me and he won't stop moving. And, and again, later AI that we've designed, especially in DLC two and one, I think do a better job of that. Mm. So, so little moments like that, like like to, to teach you how to use uh, weak points. Yeah, I mean, with with the here. when you guys made the blood maker, you're like, oh, you have to use the weak point. It is legit the only way you can take them out. And same with even the maker drones, right? It's like yeah, well, you can take out the drones in other ways, but, right? But, but that it's is, not effective <laughs> as as it is just hitting them in the weak point, which is the the head, as we know. That that is actually another thing that we're we're adjusting. Uh, a little bit Ooh, is you, adding you a little, a little bit just. more time. Yeah, oh, a little bit more, more time mm -hmm. to the to the Blood Angels uh, window. You know, they kind of pause and then they shoot, and we're just gonna hold that a tiny bit longer. Yeah. But uh, but little things like that. I don't know where we got on the subject, but but little things like that. The I Blood think Makers, could, uh, of course. Yeah, and and um, uh, there's 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 many things. They that, used to be uh, called same. Angels. That's a. That's an insider tip for you right there. It used to be called. Oh, Blood that's Angel. right. Yeah, they, they did. didn't make they it did. out with that. Yeah, they, not a tell. <laughs> the the uh, these are the jokes, folks. The, uh, <laughs> Please enjoy. These are the jokes. Ooh, I love me a prowler. Love me a oh, prowler. Am I, am I getting all my stuff? Because I definitely. I mean, them. most of them. Let me see. I haven't been keeping you super honest on every single one of them, but you've been you got most of them. Don't don't let me lose a Slayer Gate. Okay. I won't. I'll make sure we get that. God, this level is big. I love this level. I'm even looking at all the power-ups and stuff. And I'm like, damn, there's a lot in this level. We we actually, Jessica in HR mm -hmm. is our actual HR person. I know, it's the best part, and we love Jessica. She's like the sweetest person. 
Yeah, yeah. She she actually is our HR person. Yeah. So Shout out she's, to she's awesome. If you ever call in, you'll talk to Miss Donna, who's equally amazing. Absolutely. And then you'll uh, you'll be talking to uh, Miss Jessica. She's she's awesome. Let's see here. All of these cinematics are made internally by our team. Obviously, in game, everything. Um, great source of pride for all the guys involved. And that's the coolest thing too, right? All the everything is in engine so all of the skins that you can equip because the animation team is so good and because the engine team is so good shout out to all the guys and girls there like you can just have it all it's like you want to be a doomicorn and and have a different tone to every single scene equip the doomicorn skin there you go yeah it's all there. absolutely uh let's see am i crazy or does mars core not have a slayer gate am i making that up by the way, uh, for the players out there, if anybody gets nervous, I know you guys love the challenge. The the tweak to the uh, oh, Arachnotron, none, none of you will feel the tweak to the Arachnotron. It's one of those things under the hood that I think first-time players will feel it, but anybody mm -hmm. who's who knows the game, it's, it's not going to impact difficulty. You still have to do everything we're asking you to do. I think it's just going to you know, bring it, bring it up to speed with the rest of the game. I remember where it is now. We won't miss it. Don't worry. I'll keep you honest. We're getting closer to it. I would say, Josh, Please. that, and I got this feedback from several people. Okay. Is uh, once you get used to our new, me new, uh, new mechanic, new weapon, mm. you're not going to be able to play without, without it. it. Yeah. No, I totally agree. It's one of those things, kind of just like when you started the game the first couple of weeks, you're just doing dashes all the time, and you're like, I don't understand. What's wrong with this game? And you're like, Oh, I don't have dash yet because I'm not there yet. It's the same kind of thing with this new weapon and the meta that it creates because it it becomes part of your optimal game loop, especially when fighting uh, heavies and super heavies. Like it just becomes at, like you need it. At, at Marauders, at Marauders, it is, oh, it, big time for Marauders for sure. Yeah, it is. It is a way to through skill, through skill. Chad. Of course, of course, of course. We're not, we're not selling out. We're not going to give you some <laughs> shortcut to the Marauder. It's the Marauder through, button. Just press it. Yeah, through pure skill, That's right. some of you will be able to delete a Marauder easily in one shot. Now, I know some of you are like, uh, I could do that already, boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, uh, the, I think that there is uh, there's a really cool, I need ammo like a mother. Well, there's, really there's going to cool be some fire meta. to get that chainsaw ready. Yes. We... There we go. Chainsaw bait. Do you remember the first, I'll never forget the first week of this game, and people are like, I don't understand. I'm running out of ammo. Where's all the ammo? And we're like, the chainsaw. You gotta use the chainsaw. I'll never forget that. Because we had so many people on like all kinds of places. Oh, yeah. It wasn't just Facebook, Twitter, everywhere else. And they're just like, I don't understand. This game has no ammo. And it's like... Which is, you have actually access to constant ammo. Yeah. There's always ammo. And there's just ways, you know, even like subtle ways that you can... Uh... You know what? You know what we should get rid of? Oh, boy. Let's Getting it. shot by those things when you're looking when at... When you're looking at... <laughs> You're just having some toy time, and all of a sudden, here comes this fodder just burning that, it down. That, that is awful. This is nightmare, folks. I'm just walking yeah. through this. I mean, could you what, imagine what, like, uh, if when this this puppy shows up at your door, and you're just sitting there admiring the icon of sin, you're just like, oh, look at this thing. If like your girlfriend or somebody just comes by with like a super soaker and just blasts you, you're like, excuse me, can I just have this moment alone with this icon of sin, this beauty, please? That would not be. Right. So you heard it here first. I'll... No more, <laughs> no more being shot while looking at cool toys. We'll fix it eventually. Okay, soon. We trademark. We actually, we actually won't. I know it's why it's like that. We can't. Uh, believe me, that. Look, guys, that it's impossible. Something. We tried. Okay, on the stream it while is. we were here together, we tried, but we couldn't do it. It is. It's not the hill to uh, die on, though. Probably. This was uh, this this uh, level mm -hmm. was part of our. Uh... No. Oh, oh Jesus! It happens. It, part... it can happen to anybody. It happens to the best of us. That's right. It it was part of our vertical chunk. That's right. So as I said, I I hate walking around with the limp. The I know. Limp shot. That limp shotty. You're just like, but you still got the meat hook. Still got the use. Hey now. All right, there we go. Shout out to uh, 
looking at that rocket launcher, isn't that is isn't Colin Geller? Isn't that his uh his beauty, yep. his creation? Huge shout out to your boy Colin. And all of the uh, you know, God, the the whole lead concept team, art team. I mean there's you look, when we talk about anything with it, it's like go to any team and it's like talent and absolutely beautiful art that comes out of it that creates things like this majesty here. And I don't even know how you approach something like that because when you look at the history of Doom rocket launchers, you're like, perfect, perfect, perfect. Like, I love the original. I love the 2016 one. I even love the Doom 3 one. And here we have the best one now in Eternal. So I don't know how you did it, Colin, but kudos. We, we built this uh, area so you could do this. We built this BFG on rock and roll, and there you have it. Yeah. We did. That area is, is intentionally designed. That's why they give you that ammo, right? You got the ammo hiding in that yes. corner over there. That Baron, though, once has something to say about, all right, Baron's gone. Bear in mind, there is now a, yeah, you got to get that carcass off the field. He's going to block every single time we try to get in for the, the glory kills, the sweet, <laughs> sweet glory. No, but you're right. It's one of those things, too, the game is teaching you. It's like, you don't have to use the BFG, but there is ammo here, and you're probably full because you haven't used it, so go ahead and pop yes. off. Because I think this is the first time in the game where we throw two barons at you. So it's like, you have the BFG, right? Go ahead and use it. Kind of like exactly when you get the BFG in Art Complex, right? And there's like 10 caca demons. It's like, don't get me wrong. It's really fun to try to put a sticky bomb or a grenade in every single one of those caca demons' mouth. And we've done it on stream here if you were here for it. But it's also really fun to just hit that one BFG and be like, Eureka, Yahtzee, it's done. The ripping and the tearing can commence because the BFG has done the work. Ooh, limp shotgun. Gotta get it. Gotta get it. There it is. Plus a little bit of health ski. All right. Really nice dodge away from that Baron there. Uh-oh. He's something wrong with his neck. All right, he's gone. <laughs> he's out. Might need to see a chiropractor later. All right, there we go. Just a little pepper. I like that. Another weapon Got point. It. There we go. Where are you at with weapon points? Do we have enough to do another upgrade? I thought we were close, but I can't remember where are we at. If I you switch over to Arsenal. I, mean, uh, I think I'll do, I'd like to do, uh, I already did lock on. Yeah. I'd like to, I'd like to boost this up. You love remote detonate. And honestly, as a 2016 multiplayer, I love remote detonate too. I used to be a rocket launcher, super shotgun. Shout out to everybody. Uh, from the Doom 2016 multiplayer and single player speedrunning community because y'all know about remote detonate. Y'all know about that rocket launcher because it is super fun to use, just like it is in Eternal. Ooh, you tripped him up. He like legitimately went down on a knee. I don't even know if I've seen that animation in a minute. Okay, shields up. Love it. Still got a straggler. Nice. Ready? I love these. Look how big those floaters are. Hit it. Oh, my. Oh, my. And the engine, it didn't get all <laughs> slow. There it's you good. go. There you have it. I, I, uh. Oh. Nicely done. That's right. Dave Matthews satellite playing in all of our minds as that thing spins around. We're good to go. Because this is uh, this is Gen X gaming is what you're witnessing right now at its finest, ladies and gentlemen, at its absolute finest. Speaking of which, question coming in from Simplu. Shout out to Simplu. How's it going? Question is, how does the process of creating a level begin at id Software? He says, I assume mission designers, level designers, and gameplay designers come together to brainstorm ideas, but how does that work at id? Uh, what is the question? Yeah. So how does the process of creating a level begin? at id because you know we're talking about there's level designers there's uh, mission designers there's gameplay designers but how does it start where does it start it starts with the story and uh we have a, a mission design team that gets together myself it's basically the leads mm -hmm. uh and we all get together and discuss the overall arc and um and story like the 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 what why and where like what am i doing where am i going and why am i going there and uh from that, we create uh, basically a, a mission. I don't want to say mission design doc. It's like a, mm -hmm. I don't want to say screenplay either. It's a, uh, what is it? It's like a mission, it? mission design script, okay. you know? And it's basically the game. 
You know, it's it's. I go here, I go there. It is written in script format. You know, mm -hmm. using Final Draft Pro. Nice. And you Shout try out. to call out. You, you try to call out uh, basic uh, objectives, and I go here and Burn I do em. this. Yes. And and all that stuff. Um, and in that moment, you're calling out like you know beats. Like for example, in this level, you know, like uh, I'm told that th this level was born out of uh, seek and destroy, a mission of defiance. Everything that the Slayer does is in defiance of the people around him. He doesn't like authority. The best way to get the Slayer to do something is tell him he shouldn't do it. So <laughs> someone tells him that he has to do this big mission. So we, you know, we said, wouldn't it be cool if, you know, they tell him that he has to do this this really big like uh, mission. Uh, to go to the journey of the uh, center of Mars, but then the Slayer's like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Well, I'll just shoot my way through <laughs> and, and open up a hole myself. And um, You can't just shoot a hole and, in the center of Mars kind of thing? That kind of situation? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> so then we, we, we write the script, essentially, and, and then from that, uh, a level designer will then begin uh, the blockout process. We used to do paper designs, but... Lately, we've kind of gone away from that and just start to block the level out to, to be able to uh, work out uh, what it is we want uh, in the level real time. And then um, we have kind of like, you know, general, I would say soft principles about level design uh, and pacing. You know, like this is an incidental combat section. This mm. is a, an arena fight. You know, every level kind of has two to three arenas. Uh, some arenas are smaller, so they're kind of considered technical arenas. Some of them are larger, so they're like mega skate parks, all about freedom of movement. You know, how do we want to challenge the player? Like, always just asking these questions uh, as we go through. Okay, so healthy, as long as you're math, you pick up. Um, let's do max HP. Uh, so, so, uh, so, yeah, they start to block out the levels, and, and it's the, the pacing and spacing uh, portion, what we call pacing and spacing. Uh, and then from there, uh, further refinement, getting in the stakes in the ground around the narrative beats, uh, technical considerations, lots of play testing. Want to just make sure that the level. Hold on. Love it. Nice use of blood punch. And we got to get that. Can't chainsaw him. Actually, do we have? We only have two pips. But that gargoyle looks ready. He gone. <laughs> So then, um, uh, level designers don't, don't, they do some gameplay stuff, absolutely, mm -hmm. and there's not a hard line between the two, but then, um, uh, at some point it starts to move into the level, uh, gameplay, gameplay pass phase. Uh, those, there's an overlap there, obviously, uh, game, gameplay designers, uh, need to, need to have an understanding and have some level design chops and vice versa. And then, uh, they start to put the fun in the map and refine the experience. Uh, you know, crafting specific level designers do uh, level design puzzles, but then um, gameplay designers do puzzles as well. Uh, lots of combat considerations, different things. Um, a lot of times, uh, gameplay designers are iterating on little sketches, uh, at arenas, sketches, puzzles that will we will just take wholesale and put them in the level. Oh God! You need to get that uh, that sweet sweet ammo. Oh God! Oh, you're going God. in with wow. the rocket launcher, you maniac! That was really dumb was, was the risky. um so so uh yeah like chad chad Eanes or like you know different people james Allen will will do these little puzzles that we'll end up just kind of putting wholesale warning warning before uh, we go down there we, we we will go down there too but again this is the slayer gate uh key area so we got oh yeah, sometimes oh yeah. we got to go down to go up but also we can get in those ven venny boys i feel like yes slayer gates times yeah yeah, yeah. Get this so we put the puzzles in and uh, and then, um, you know, play it, play it, play it. Really work out the pacing. I think that's where DLC 2 really excels. It's got really good pacing. The pacing of the Eternal campaign is really good. DLC 2's pace, DLC 1's pacing gets a little dense. Oh, I didn't hit the keeper. Uh, but uh, like I said, wait, yeah, you, do, do yeah, you, can, you can double jump on that and then get up in the vent. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then... Um... um Refine the pacing. We've got weapon introductions. It's a giant process. Giant process. Weapon introductions, progression items. Mm -hmm. This whole time, the systems design team, you know, planning out progression. You know, we're, we're, we're just like a many, many layers uh, 
all working in unison. Wait, before we go down there, go to the other side of the uh, vents. Oh, we can, we, can still, right. we, can, we can still get back there. We can get back there. Okay. We'll get back there. Also, you just, I just want to give a shout out. You just happened to uh, to grab the Goroth vinyl, which is from Quake Champions, which was done by none other than Andrew Holschult, who was in chat right now. Shout out to Andrew. Yes. Uh, another Texas native too. It's like, it's like all the Texas love in one place. Like you, you, you love it. You gotta love it. You gotta love seeing it. Just a, a hell of a, a good dude and an amazing uh, composer. So shout out to Andrew. You see it up there He's on the awesome. right. So wait, wait, go back, go back. Yeah, jump up there and then let's go to the right side this time. Yep, that's the one. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Yes. All right. Now we're ready, 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 ready. Now it's gonna get serious. It's time for the Slayer Gate. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, Slayers everywhere. It's about to happen. This is it. It's been pulled and we are transported to, I actually, I love this. This arena is good, good fun. I like the Slayer Gate a lot. Some Marauders to deal with. Such a different spacing than some of the other ones. I really dig this one. And eventually some, uh, some heaviers, let's see. I actually prowlers on this map on this particular Slayer Gate give no. me I have to That was an accident. <laughs> VFG uh uh premature VFG um it's okay. We'll get more. We'll get it again. We just won't use it the next time when it when the level awards it to us. Ooh, look at that burn. Oh, but behind you the other Hell Knight cuz they're they're coming in pairs in triplets. All right. Time to turn and burn here. You got this. I love how you're using the rocket launcher in this close quarters. You are showing people the tension of firing a hot dog in a hallway. I love it. Yeah, that BFG did hit the Marauder <laughs> like direct. You love this. It hit him? Yeah, it hit him. He's dead? Uh, I think. That was an accident. I wanted to fight him. <laughs> no, no, no. He's I, up there. I, he's up there. He's up there. I think I just saw him. He's behind you. Is he on top of a box? Or did I make that up? No, he's done. Yeah, you hit him. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> that was an a I'm sorry, Marauder. We were going to dance. That was an accident, sir. It's like you just take your dancing partner and you just throw him in another dimension. You're like, no, actually, we're not going to dance. You dance for me. Not here, though. Elsewhere. I'll see you in the nether realm. <laughs> I love... You've been banished. The, on a controller, I just think this game feels amazing. I think it, it, it's just so satisfying. Yeah. Not too shabby on keyboard and mouse either, but no, you're right. There's not many games where you have as much freedom to do the crazy movements that you do, but they still feel so fluid. No, and so and and, and chat. This is this is base controller action. People who say that the game is not well. There you go. I'm talking the shit here. And base controller. Like an idiot. Inverted. I know. Inverted sticks. That vertical uh, stick. Oh what? no! You shot a rocket launcher with. That oh, a barrel. Damage. There was a barrel there. Yeah, you did a barrel roll. That was roll. so lame. You did an actual barrel roll. It's okay. You get you to fight the Marauder the again. Keyboard, you mouse and keyboard people wish that on me. Yeah, that's what it was. It was the curse. The curse of that's the mouse it. and keyboard. Okay, we get to fight the Marauder now. Legit. No BFG right, this fight. time. So we get to dance. Real. Let's fight him for real. I'm kidding. That wasn't an accident. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I really thought you were about to do that to him. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Man, he is active too. Okay, I love it, love it. Dealing with the doge, nice. You actually got a good spot right now because, oh God, you're way too close in that prowler. Got to go, see you later. Did we get a stagger? No, 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 not yet. Man, that maker drone also wants you to feel that presence. Oh, the prowler, okay, prowler's off the board. Looking a little low on the HP. Okay, getting a little bit back. Nice use of the teleporter. Gotta get that maker draw. Oh no, the doge! Oh no. You made Fido angry. Oh my god, you're shooting a rocket launcher at close range. You are risking it all. You're playing real dangerous right now. I like this. Rocket launcher's still out, folks. Small, small area, don't care. Doing it anyway. All right, getting the HP, getting the HP. The doge is out, you can hear him. Nice chainsaw. Marauder to the left, gotta go. Leave a, <laughs> leave a grenade for later. Something to remind you, remind them of you. Okay. 
Ooh, there it is. The fair fight is over and the Marauder is down. Now it's time to bear in mind uh, taking these pieces off the board so we can get double Baron all the way across the sky. Dude, I'm telling you that Maker Drone is hitting the mark with all those headshots. My God, you're going rocket launcher up close like such a wild man right now. This is yeah, Gen X it. gameplay. I love it. I love it. Remote detonate's a really nice choice though in this area because it's so dense with demons. Glory kill, not interested. Gotta take the Hell Knight out. Glory killable. You might have got with that remote detonate. Oh, no, no, no. He's back. Ooh, blood punch comes out. Chainsaw? Nah. <laughs> you keep letting him live. I'm, I started to think that you guys had an, an alliance going on or something. All right, he's off the board. No more Hell Knight. It's I gotta be honest. I, I, can't, I can't get enough of playing like this. Like oh, yeah. when, it, when a game once you get used to playing like this, it's it's very very hard to not feel, not want to feel this unleashed. This challenge, like the whole time where you're just like pushed to yeah, make dude, decisions at every I second. Mean, my, yeah. My my brain is like. <laughs> <laughs> you're going full like beautiful mind like the the hangover all that stuff. There's there's numbers and inputs and everything in your brain. You exactly. have like crucible mind right now. Right, and the soundtrack low. is supporting that because it is giving you all the all the, the BNP right now. The beats per minute are up. The Cerebro has been uh, activated. It is it is time for Galaxy Brain and inputs. Nice spacing though. I like this. Given some spacing because those Barons will remove that spacing as much as they can with those giant jumps and ground pounds, but. Doing a nice job of just doing a little keep away here. Ooh, got him bunched up. Great time for some uh, some splash damage. Oh yeah, got one of them glory killable. Want to finish that off before they get out of it? Nope, they back. Oh no, don't have a pip yet, don't have a pip yet. Ooh, you just got that pip. Nicely done, okay, we're fine. Getting out of this, oh my. Might need to blood punch your way out of this one. Love it, love it. Maybe get a little burn in there too, get a little armor out of that too. Nice, nice. All right, we got the pit. We're back. Dude, I don't know if you're stretching this out on purpose or not, but I am loving this fight right now. Chad is 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 uh is calling you on too. I love this. Killed the soldier with the dash. Sometimes you gotta just show him, bashful bard. You just gotta show him what's up, because the slayer is a weapon. The dash forward that can that can kill someone. Have you seen the slayer? Oh my god! Ooh, you oh, are getting so insane. risky in the hallways, oh, man. Only just to blow up a, my my <laughs> face with a shotgun. What, chat? Bring it on! Yeah, what do you got? Low what ammo? else does this game have? This game is for suckers. <laughs> not concerned with low Seriously. ammo. Seriously, this not is this concerned. is nothing. This is easy. This is easy. It mode. really is easy. We need to chat. We need to be playing the Super Gorness Master Level That's Nightmare. This is too easy, kids. That's right. Don't forget to pick up more. that key. We have had people be like, I don't understand. I beat everything. I can't get the Unmaker. And it's like, did you pick up the Empyrean key? They're like, what is that? I'm sorry, what is that? And it's like, you got to get the key after you finish this, the, the Slayer Gate. That's the whole point of finishing it, other than the satisfaction. Oh, I, I, I have done that. I yeah, have, where you just oh, like I, bounce, I, right? You're like, I did it. I'm done. I'm out. So one thing that I, I really never get a chance to to call out here and I'm going to get a list. Okay. We are going to read a list of names. I don't have it right now. Of uh, all the amazing artists who contributed to this stuff. Like it's easy to call out the Jason O'Connells because they're mad men and, and they're all over the game and the yeah. Jerry's and the Brandons and everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rich Eastwoods, I mean these guys are beasts. But uh, there is a team of monster artists led none other by Tony Garza, our our magnificent genius art director, Lear DeRossi, our monster environment lead uh, Cameron Kirby, our monster prop guy who does all the awesome weapons and, and it's just a stellar team. Jason Martin, our character, our lead character artist. And, uh, I love her, like, you've got to get a list together and you're like, I'm just going to write off the but, but, that, but, that is, but that is nothing because yeah. underneath, uh, you know, working alongside those monster leads, because uh, those are all our leads yeah. uh, and our director level guys, mm -hmm. is a team of, of just beast, beastly artists. Beast. Uh, you know, it's it's one of the largest parts of our team that and programming like yeah. evan wells very good friend of mine someone who's uh i love to bust his chops non-stop because <laughs> evan i'll give you a shout out you are actually better at me than video games Ooh. i'm going to admit that 
that in Warzone, I I am very often the reason why we lose. I'm saying that live in front of people. So you're saying his I shoulders mean, I, are, are needing massaging because he's carrying that weight so listen, often. My, you know, who, at times mm -hmm. I'm kind of like Oppum in Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> I am that the guy with the typewriter. That's me. Yeah. Once in a while. Once you're in a that while. guy. Okay. You're just taking I, I notes. Mean, I, I think I'm Tom Hanks, but I, I might be kind of op at times. Okay. But, of course, in the world of shit-talking, of which I spend most of my time, sure. I, I when we're playing, mm -hmm. I'm just blaming him for why we lose. <laughs> but uh, You're the guy going, he's over there, what are you doing? Res me, res yeah. me, res me, that's you. Okay. Well, I'm the, guy, I'm the guy that shoots first, I see. and everybody's like, dude. We got, we're not even in that, position, what are you That doing? guy was like 200 <laughs> yards away. You don't even have a sniper. I'm like, listen. It, I, I see things, I need to kill it. Because I play Doom, <laughs> goddammit. Right. And in Doom, we don't wait to shoot. We Something's in front of you. You know what to do. Something's in front of me, I just kill it. Yeah. And as a result, that pure aggression mm -hmm. in a Battle Royale setting can cost us some games. Yeah. I have cost my team some games. But, but, uh, but Evan is a beast. And I forgot why I started talking about Evan. But, Probably uh, maybe because anyway, oh, no, no, he contribute. Okay, because he he breaks my chops mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. that's like the left brain side of the building. Everybody at it software is like mega creative. There ain't mm -hmm. nobody at it software who's not an artist. Hundred percent. But we have kind of like left brain artists and we have right brain artists. Mm -hmm. And obviously the programmers are kind of left brain. You know, good at math, all that good stuff. Yeah. And and um, and I don't shout them out enough. And I need to more guys that's like fair. Billy and Evan and their teams and. Of course, the great, the Tiago, great all these Robert guys. Duffy, yeah. Tiago. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, we, we just we just have a we just have a monster monster oh, yeah. team. The brain and is I, the collective brain is big. It is galaxy level for sure. It is, yeah. and so I gotta I gotta get some lists going. Fair. Axel, Bogdan, all of those, the 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 uh, the incredible team we have. Many yeah. of them from Germany. Yeah, who are, who are with us now mm -hmm. in Dallas, because. You don't got nothing if you don't got good programmers. That's like true. a race car team, you got the designers and you got the engineers. Right. And, That's true. And, um, you can have finesse, so you can have muscle, but if you don't have that big brain, what's it worth? That's How can you right. use it? How can you show it off? No, it's, so, a, it's a really good point, though. It's like, with how nutty, like the art is nutty. Everybody can tell the art is nutty because you see it. But the reason you see it at like 7,000 frames a second is because of these these guys and girls that are putting that crazy brain power of the math that you and I cannot comprehend, but to them comes second nature, and that is how you're you seeing this. I gotta math? be honest. Oh God, no, dude, I'm. Yeah, man. It's bad. I'm not kidding. It's bad. My kid, I my kids are in elementary school, and I'm yeah. already sweating bullets because like it, we 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 reached. Yeah, dude, we we reached the the, the peak of my math skills very you're, early. You're like on, you're like. Did you check your work? Because yeah. you have to now. No, it, this is for your <laughs> own it. sake. And you're like, I can't. I don't know what the hell. Chat for doing for long those division. Chat that, for those in chat that have kids, you get to relive so many amazing things, right, with mm -hmm. your kids. It's mm -hmm. amazing, and then you also get to relive some of the some of the not so some of the nightmares, you know, like homework, mm -hmm. and 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 when they ask you to help them with it, and you're just like, oh my god, this is as this is as painful as I remember it was. You're like, well, did the, you do uh, it? Did you feel good about it? Well, that's important. <laughs> Keep that feeling. Let's let's talk about that. <laughs> oh my god, I almost died. Ooh, I off. did die. It's okay. You have, so life. you have an extra life. You have an extra life. Right. So got to get this Baron off the board. And then I think you got to... Do you have a Doom Hunter in? Again, I'm always thinking about the master level version. I, I love uh, Remote Detonate, dude. I'll use this thing in a closet. I love this thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Remote Detonate is, is good times. And you can, because like you said, you can make sure that it explodes far enough away from you where you're like, I will not touch the splash damage. It's all good. I like to shoot zombies with a ballista. Yeah. Sometimes you just gotta flex on him. Be like, I know Josh, I could. Did you see that, Josh? That I was... bounced off him, hit him with the chat. That's that. Did chat, see that? I did chat. Did we Seriously. get confirmation that that chat, was seen? Did chat. Did we get confirmation? Did you guys see it? Can did I... you guys use? Can I? Can I get a little respect, Josh? Okay. For we, we, I, I'm seeing uh, Art Vader, Mr. Dude, Root Boy, Jakey Pants, Moonfire. Uh, I, I saw one person say nope. So that is a troll. And we that will is, uh, remember that. We'll keep in that, that in, the, is in the brain. Yeah. Josh, do we do we have? Mm. I think we might have to to start up Friday night fights after this, which we will, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but uh, Friday night fights where I take on Cronid 
<laughs> it conjugates with the controller. That's it. I, I would can do love it. to I, see I, this. I, I okay. You heard it here first. That's uh, it. Don't ask how I'll win because I'll actually go into their accounts and, and <laughs> their characters. But I will. Listen, I'm allowed to do that stuff. That's right. So Cronin uh, conjugates. First of I, all, practice up because you you've heard the challenge. It's been the, the gauntlet so, has been laid. With with our game being this skill skill based bonanza mm -hmm. of insanity, everybody knows that Get the place that, that you go. No, oh, you I don't have, have any pigs. I don't have any gas, it's so stupid. Again, shout out Every to Entry Gods Part 2 where it puts that pip uh, in a customizable way <laughs> towards yeah. the center of your screen so you can always tell. Somebody asked that question earlier. Uh, if when I played, I, I, I thought about it or I recognized it. And it's one of those things that's perfect because it's unconscious. You just see it and it's not out of the corner of your eye. It's in the center of your vision, but it doesn't take up any space. But you were about to say, sorry, but yes, it is good. And it is in, uh, starting in Ancient Gods Part 2. It'll be in the entire game, that new, sweet, centered race car HUD. But you were saying yes uh i was saying as you were talking about challenging cronin and conjugates oh god i'm and becoming the ultimate slayer of uh, friday night Fight. yeah so so uh um, all right let's let's get into the flow state i'm out of the flow state i gotta, gotta get, get back, back into in it. you gotta get you back in you gotta get you in that jordan space where you're just 23 you don't have to even think about what number you are i saw uh, i saw a critic who will remain nameless okay and any yeah, he didn't like Summon Doom Eternal, and he what? said that, uh, he's like, you know, when you're in the flow state, it's really good, but, uh, but, you know, when you fall out of it, it doesn't feel good, and I'm like, uh, I, don't think you've ever, I, don't, I don't think you've ever been in the flow state of Doom Eternal, let's be honest. Also, it's the, like, if, the, you're, if you get in the flow state, it's, it's something that you can get in again, because as you progress through the game, it becomes progressively easier, oh. because it's teaching you things, and your arsenal is expanding. Yes, and, Making and that once, space you, easier once to get you in. get into the flow state, there is a... Uh, that's all, that's the only place you want to be! Exactly. In, in the soft embrace of Doom Eternal's combat loop. That's it. That's how we think of it all the time. It's that sweet, soft and embrace. And then, I have to say, Josh, would you say that the, the, the very best... Uh, the very best slayers mm -hmm. are in are in um are, are in Australia. In no, God, where are, you are, <laughs> are, in, are 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 in battle mode. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I I, if you if yeah, if you really wanna if you really wanna take your game to the next level, mm -hmm. you know, battle mode is tuned for the very for the best slayers. We for have sure. to tune it that way because yeah. if we don't tune it that way, you guys don't want to see. It. It's been imbalanced a couple times. Yep. And when it's in balance, the it's best rough. slayers never lose. I yeah. mean, I, I even will have the best slayers sending me emails like, look, dude, it's not like I'm not having fun. But, but I got, don't think you, anyone you got, else is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, they're like, and, and when you watch what they're doing, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's not, it's pretty, it's pretty tough. But, right. but uh, you know, we feel like we've achieved the balance. Not that we couldn't do better. Yeah. You know, we, we, we got I mean, some things we're working on. It's an ever-evolving process, of course, yeah, of like but, what balance is and how the meta's if you're if you're looking for the next challenge beyond this, yeah. and you consider yourself a real gamer. Said with a burp, which is really the proper and only yes. way to talk about being a real gamer, is That's with some, right. some level of belch uh, either some felt, of, heard, or seen. Or all, you know what some, I mean? Some, le some level of flatulence. <laughs> the the uh, <laughs> is that uh, go go to go to go to Spicy Demons and and say hi. Yeah, Discord.gg slash Spicy Demons. Just get in there and say, and say hi. Mm -hmm. I I think I'm a good Slayer, mm -hmm. and there's going to be some people there who'll be like, that's that's interesting. Or they're like, that's, that's really that. cool. Let's see it now. But, that's a cool Let's see how idea. Good you really are. Yeah. So I got a little birdie told me shout out to Aziops. I don't think I'm saying oh, his yeah, name yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. But saying it well enough. We get it. He. So is it true, Josh, that he is the Zan of console? He. Uh, he might be. I mean, there's. We have. Look. I mean, that's the beauty of of Doom Eternal and especially with battle mode is like we have monsters. We have. Everybody knows Zan because. We've seen yeah, Friday Night Fights. We've seen week after week. We went through the gambit. We did the competition. Hey, Kyle, there's a bunch of monsters in there, but Zan was the dominant life form of PC. That's been established. Not to say that that can't change, but he is at the top of the pyramid 
as of the Friday night fights, uh, you know, battle mode competitions that is, we did. Is that, is that still the case? Like, has anybody unseated Zan? I don't as, know, chat. Uh, look, Let's I also, hear it. Let's hear it. What do you, know, you guys we're, think? We're, we're, we're working on a good update, by the way, for, for battle mode. So, yeah. like, you know, we're, we're going to be getting some more content out to you guys. For sure. Competitive, competitive mode is very much uh, underway and things like that. But, uh, <laughs> so I understand if new Slayers haven't stepped in by now. There's but some people is, saying it's it's them. I'm seeing you know a lot of a lot of love for uh, as the ops, of course, on console. Some people are asking if Zan is the Doom Slayer. We can't confirm or deny that. We can just say that uh, I'm seeing I, love watch, for Bazooka Joey, of course. When I watch Zan play, mm -hmm. I think to myself, "There's a young man who's almost as good as me." That's that's what I think. <laughs> I think that uh, I say, "Look at that, he's doing pretty good." This young man is on the right path. He's got the potential. Um, he's got the potential. He's sure. not there yet. Mm -hmm. He's not. He's not slaying with the speed and grace <laughs> of a Gen Xer. Sure, sure. You just, you just you just use rocket launchers in tight spaces, <laughs> and and you miss shots. Yeah. And you take too long to kill Doom Hunters. He's he's not that good. You know but, where caution belongs what? to to the wind. Missed, Ooh, he missed it. Missed it. Hold on, that, that Doom Hunter's no. got something to say about this. They, these kids are hacking my it's a hack. <laughs> They're hacking my computer. Oh my god, there's that's, being that's there's what's happening. There's a DDoS inside of the rocket launcher. We've never seen this before. This is the first time ever on Okay, there we I, go. Doom Hunter. They out. have they have attachments on controllers. These kids today they could do crazy things. So these they, wild these wild children they, and kids. They're, what they're are trying you to do? make me look bad. <laughs> Doom hacker they, initiated. That's right. Okay. Alright, portal's open. What's gonna happen? Chat, it's the not. Portal? It's not enough, chat. I need more. How are we gonna do it? But I, the arena gotta, is so satisfying. Oh, it's a good arena. It really Brandon, is. Brandon Souders, big shout, shout out. out. Huge shout out. Also, this was a. Uh, this was the level a lot of people first played. I think at E3 and QuakeCon, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. This Mars Core. So I remember. Actually, the first memory I ever have of using the. Plasma microwave mod was in that arena you just fought. Just stopping a Baron in his tracks, I was like, oh yeah, this is gonna work. This microwave just, mod's gonna work. Can we give a shout out to the art team for visuals in Doom Eternal? Crazy, yeah. awesome, I awesome know. stuff. That could have just been like an open space, but somebody's like, uh, can we get some like uh, flame at different heights and beauty uh, just kind of popping off here? Can we do that? And somebody said yes, and then they did it. I am blown away by the skill uh, of all of our player base. The, we're not even to say the uh, the single player players. Got to give a shout out to Midnight too. I mean, we call out our core also. I mean, oh, yeah. Midnight is definitely good at the game. Midnight's like, a beast. He, yeah, he he's he's legit. Yeah. Uh, oh, little cutscene here. Okay, okay. I'm sure Neto Kun has made a video about this. What might happen here? Yes. A little rip and tear. A little respect he's given. Look, he's a little he's looking tough. And he says, Welcome home, great slayer, little environmental storytelling. Great slayer. Guard the priest. Cool. I always thought it'd be cool that it's like that mix of sci fi and fantasy, uh you know, which you don't see a lot of. Mm -hmm. You see uh obviously you see some of it in Thor going all the way back to the movie Krull. Oh uh, which I is love a very Krull. good Crawl was good. Crawl was a good mix of sci-fi and uh, fantasy, and we learned the story here. You doing Sentinel of, Prime? You just doing it? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, yeah. I thought we we're doing that. Aren't we doing? That's next week. Today? That's next week. Oh, we're doing okay. Sentinel Prime, and then we're doing Tear Snapad, my friend. All right, that's right. But uh, we got to stick to the script. Stick to the schedule. We got We got to stick to the schedule. But no, you were talking about Crawl, and that's another. Okay. As we explored Doom here, and we explored our, our, our fandom, our nerddom, our love for, for cinema and for games and for art and yes. for life, little known fact to some of you youngsters out there that don't have an X in your generation, um, <laughs> Star Wars, okay, George Lucas had Star Wars, they were, they were basically, yes. they were testing if they could sell a blockbuster movie like Star Wars in the market, so Krull for that studio was the test to see if they could release something like Star Wars and Krull did well enough that you have Star Wars. So for anybody who gives shit to Krull, remember, 
without Kroll, you would have no Star Wars. And also, Liam Neeson is in Kroll, so just shout outs all around. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. Well, I don't know how it would hold up today. I haven't seen it in a while. A lot I mean, of, lot, there are a lot, a lot of our references. Mm -hmm. Some of them, like, like I watched The Goonies recently. Oh, I love that, it. that, that, that it's a good movie. Didn't age like what really? I remember it as a kid. You watch what you say about movies. Goonies. No, go ahead. I want to hear. I that. loved it, but I was definitely like, okay, like it's been a while. Did a lot of screaming, a lot of kids screaming, getting on my nerves. A lot of adventure. But, yeah. A lot of adventure, but but uh, so I don't know if Crow will hold up. I haven't watched it in a while. A okay. movie that will hold up for you guys okay. you should go watch if you have not already is Jeff Goldblum's uh, The Fly. Oh, go yes. directed by David Cronenberg. Go watch that movie. Awesome movie. And, and in the spirit of that, mm -hmm. then go play Carrion, the amazing. Oh, I love it. Uh, uh, 2D action platformer, I guess you would call it. But that's a great. Platformer. That's a great one-two punch. And then if you happen to just not, if you've never seen John Carpenter's The Thing, just make it yes. the perfect evening, the perfect weekend, the perfect whatever, and do 100%. The Fly, Carry On, and The Thing, and you'll just be like, I want to be in this spooky space and, forever. We'll and I it. promise you all, this is all just done. That that pure mastery that you just witnessed was on a bass controller i don't want to hear what? it that this can't be done yeah you don't want to make me put my paddles on because then you don't want to see it'll that be, your eyes you don't see your that. eyes can't keep up the you, dps they, it's, it's too high it's the the, the boomer I, I was gonna say boomer juice will flow but that sounds kind of <laughs> disgusting so it sounds say, different than we intended maybe <laughs> yeah the 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 awesomeness you don't you don't, you don't want to see it That's, so it's a lot of awesomeness you, I want to see. I want to see big boomer energy. I, I want. I want to see more. I want to see some videos. I want to see some streams. I want to see. I want to see other people's awesome playthrough vids. Uh, this, so the thing that I can't do. Let's talk about what I can't do. Obviously, there's many things. I didn't think there was anything, but yeah. Okay, I, this is I, interesting. I, <laughs> <laughs> this I, with a with a with a controller. Uh -huh. You know, uh, you can't. Well, you know, I, I can't do multiple things at once. I can't sure. obviously this, on a baseline. I can't jump, aim, and shoot at the same time. Yeah. You know, I can I can do multiple things at once with the mouse and keyboard, which again is why black paddles. I uh, would highly recommend it. Let me show you my setup on my my PlayStation controller. Hold on a second. All right. I love this. This is that raw, unexpected. He's already back. So. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So this is that's my quick. PlayStation controller, and what I like to do Ooh. is I like to have my I have two stick extenders, ones that's like halfway. You could buy these. These are control freaks. Yeah, I have those too. Those are great. I, these are good. Uh, let me snap that back on. Okay, and I like the I like the the aim stick to be extra long, mm -hmm. and then I gotta say, man, Sony killed it on this really nice back paddle. Oh, yeah. I also have yeah, yeah back this paddle is a like. Back didn't it, didn't it not come out that long ago? It was like maybe like a year and a half ago or something. It wasn't like super long ago, but that was like the official Sony one that they released, right? That you could just like on. put on there. I'm going to get something else. Do it. What's it going to get, chat? What are you going to see next? What's it going to be? Let's see the predictions. Fly them in. Let's go. What do we got? Is it going to be a, 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 a signed Goonies? Uh, 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 God, what's his name? I'm blanking on his Stop. name. Oh, what the hell is his name? Is it Richard Donner that directed Goonies? It is, right? Superman, Richard Donner. So this, oh, this okay. is uh, ignore this, that. What is this? Collective Minds uh, Strike Pack? Which what I didn't realize is that Strike Pack is also like a uh, you could put mods in this thing, or it comes with mods. What is that? What am I looking which at? Which I don't use. So if you see me in a battle royale mm -hmm. out there on the field, <laughs> I'm not cheating. I don't know how to. I don't use this thing, but but uh, it it attaches to your controller. And it's uh, it's really nice. So you're huh. able to simulate some, obviously, of what you could do with the, uh, the, keyboard with the mouse. mouse and keyboard. But but mostly, what do you think, Josh? I mean, as we break it down, it's target acquisition, point and click shooting. It's not easy. It's not a gimme. No. It, it, it actually mouse and keyboard play is more complex. I mean, I think there's a tier there of complexity. I mean, you got to play that thing like an instrument. Hundred percent. For those of you who can, of which there are many, most of our audience obviously is PC. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I am super super impressed. I love oh, yeah. to see it, but no, I just want to hold. I want to hold it down for people who who are who are controller players and and be able to prove on the hardest setting that it's uh and I and 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 uh, it's fun. It's fun as anything. But but I love seeing all of it. I'm not biased anything, and I'm I'm all right. The mouse keyboard with Doom Eternal. I yeah. I, sh I 
I've I've started a nightmare run with mouse and keyboard, and then I've stopped and I've started again. I've, st- I've stopped. That's fair. But uh, I did the same thing with it, controller too. <laughs> so I yeah, yeah. Because you're just like, I want to see how that feels. And you're like, ooh, this is actually really nice. But then you like get kind of used to it, and you're like, wait, am I getting rusty on the other thing now? Let me switch back. Let me switch back. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do yeah. that all the time. <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure. All right, let's get but, some. Uh, we got to get some questions in because yeah, yeah. we are almost at that precious, delicate time where we sign off just for a week, just for the night. But before we do, I'm going to get some last questions in here. All right, this one's coming from Nantroll. Shout out to Nantroll. The question is, and this is written in all caps, so there's a lot of emphasis on all this, okay? Why can the Doom Slayer breathe in Mars orbit? This is a lot of a uh, 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 specific question. But needs oxygen tanks underwater. Please explain to me <laughs> how because that works. Video, because video games. Uh, I just... Uh, there it is. It, so at one point... <laughs> We were going to attempt to like you got you got to pick a you got to pick a tone mm. of your universe, right? Sure. You go, you go Flash Gordon, you know, or Star Wars, right? So yeah. li- little fantasy, little like stuff that doesn't one hundred percent make sense. You know, dudes walking around in robes. Doesn't that shit get caught on the turbines? How do you get in? Why would you <laughs> wear a giant kimono if you fly X wings? It doesn't make a lot of sense. Sure. But the the. Uh, but then, um, and on the other side, we have like interstellar, you know, like real hard science, yeah. science fiction. Mix in with uh, love, which is arguably not science or, 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 or you know, uh, yeah, not yeah. definable, but sure, sure, sure. Yeah, you got to kind of pick a lane somewhere, right? <laughs> but, but that their science fiction is justified, like yeah, yeah, yeah. airlocks. You know, airlocks mm-hmm. are a thing, you know, like uh, preparing to dock and all those things. Like yeah. it's, or aliens, really Scott's aliens, you know? Sure. Whereas in Star Wars, they're just zipping out of the atmosphere and nobody cares. And, right, right, right. Uh, you know, uh, like Guardians please, of the like Galaxy. In, in the middle of the space, you just pull up the thing and you're like, R2, are you doing okay back there? You're good? Yeah. Okay, let me go ahead and shut the hatch. Okay, we're good. Doesn't matter. Guardians Guardians of the Galaxy, apparently you can hang out in space for like two minutes. You Not know, a big you're deal. Just gonna, it's you just, just cold. It's a little cold. Yeah, you got to hold your breath. You get cold. That's Not a big it. Deal. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you like explode. Like, I don't know what happens when you're in space, <laughs> but like, I, I'm sure it's not that. Hopefully we never but, have to but, find out. So we, we err on the side of, you know, like comic book fiction. I mean, it's, it's uh, because if not that I don't love that. I mean, I think it's yeah. awesome. It's just, do you want us to spend time with that? I think it's just the right. tone of that is different. I want, I want to, I want to get to what we just did. I want to be out there. I want to be skipping around and blowing stuff up and yeah. seeing cool things. There's a giant mech in space and all this stuff. And, uh, and we can't, it's not that you can't do it. It's just a different type of game that I, I still think would be really cool. Just sure. not necessarily it. When you have something in your game, like the chainsaw and it's an iconic weapon and you yeah. have to take the chainsaw and justify that in your world. Right. Or you have a character named the pinky or the mancubus. <laughs> you're the, the stakes are in the ground, dude. And they yeah. are on the side of comic book fiction, you know, like for sure it is, it is, it is, it is a uh, fanciful sci-fi. Yeah. It is not hard sci-fi. Right. So, um, that's ultimately why we do that stuff is because I think our brand dictates that we are much more cartoonish with things because, mm-hmm. again, we have pinkies and mancubuses and all that stuff. Yeah, that's so, totally so fair. So airlocks, it, we just, we're very wishy-washy with gravity and airlocks. That's fair. And then when you need it underwater, it's a video game. So you know what? You can't just be under there forever. It's got to be some some tension there. You can't just be floating <laughs> around having fun. Only you got to be doing it with a little bit of something to lose. Okay, next question. This is a question for both of you, and the both of you part is in capitals. I like to emphasize the capitals, which there are a lot of in these questions. Are you guys going to talk about the, again, back to capitals, new weapon? Since you guys said two weeks ago on Mars Core, you will be talking about how it works, etc. Of course, by new weapon, well, we're talking about the Ancient Gods Part 2, the upcoming... So we will not, because Josh and I have probably squeezed every last hint out of this outside of just telling you what it is. But Josh and I made a list. We did, we did. Should we get into... Should we do it? Let's let's hit it. So reveal, should we have a drum roll? Reveals. We're going to do a reveals of... Every every week, Josh and I have agreed to uh, break off a little piece of DLC 2 to reveal it on this which is not even a stream anymore. I think it's just a podcast, but like it's a live <laughs> it's podcast. True. So welcome. Uh, go ahead, Josh. All right. You could start which whatever one you want. This is, we, we were talking a lot about controllers and keyboards. So this is uh, real deep in the woods of the minutia for especially all the controller players out there, but this also applies to keyboard and mouse players. So shout out to keyboard and mouse players if you use 
the quick switch button still, which again is on uh, the regular bind on keyboard is Q. I, I think it's what it's it's R1, right? On on controller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so how many of you have run into the issue when you're either using a controller or a keyboard and mouse when you hit that input, which again would pop up the weapon wheel if you hold it, but it's supposed to just kind of quick switch back and forth. How many of you have run into the problem where it basically doesn't do exactly what you want it to do when you want to make that difference to say, I want to use it just for last weapon use and switch back and forth? Because on controller, it is the only way to quick switch unless you're insane like some of the guys I've seen that are slayers in <laughs> battle mode that can like legit, they just have like the, the place in the weapon wheel so tuned in to like the left stick and that thing to be so fast. But in general, I've seen a lot of people we've all experienced that you have that input problem where you go, crap, I didn't mean to switch weapons here. I just wanted to do the last weapon thing. Well, here's the news of that long-winded story to get to this one new point that's coming in the Ancient Gods Part 2. There is a new option in the controls menu, which is called Weapon Wheel Open Delay. And so the beauty of this is, is it's a slider like everything... Um, that we have in the, a lot of the things that we have in the UI and in the controls where you can basically set how long, I think it's in microseconds, in milliseconds, sorry, that you want that to be. So you can tune it in so that you never make that wrong input when you hit it and you go, damn it, I didn't want it to bring up the weapon wheel. I didn't want to switch things. I just wanted to use last weapon or the opposite where you go, I want it to be that when I pop that thing, it goes into the weapon wheel faster. I don't have to hold it as long. So that is a brand new, I'm seeing people in chat pop off. It's great news, huge victory. Yes, let's go finally, interesting, OMG, yes, oh yes. So that is the nugget for this week, um, which applies to everybody, but especially I think a lot of controller players that have had that issue. We have seen that, you guys have given us that feedback as always. You guys are gracious with giving us all your best ideas for how to make your slaying experience or your demon experience in battle mode that much snappier and more fun. So. That's just the, that's a little teaser for for this. Yeah, one. yeah. You go. That's, that's a pretty Absolutely. Good one. And I, I know it's something you guys have asked for. Do we give him one more? The second one on the list or no? Oh, I don't know. It's. Should we? Let's do it. OK. Are we doing like, what like, I think we're doing? Are we doing the. The S begins with an S. Okie dokie. Oh, we are doing it. OK. All right. Yes. So everybody, first of all. Thank you for joining us. Uh, <laughs> this is Hugo Martin's <laughs> director gameplay of Doom Eternal, the campaign. But we now are talking about, we are in the other realm. We are in the next world uh, after this. It's past the campaign. It's past the Ancient Gods Part 1. We're now in Ancient Gods Part 2, the upcoming DLC. And now we're going to talk about a new drum roll. I'm seeing drums. Brr. That's right. Enemy. We're talking about <laughs> a new enemy. Okay. Yes. Yes. Do you guys want to hear about a new enemy? Are we doing that? Is that what we're doing? Because I, I think like I think we, I think we need to. I okay. think we need to okay. discuss it. Okay. Should I just say the name to set it up, and then you kind of just, just take it away from there, and then we can go back and forth a bit on 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 the situation. Do it. Okay. Yes. I'm pulling the mic up so you can see it. <laughs> the screecher. I was going to try to do a noise with that, but it just wasn't going to be pleasant. So I just said it as the name. <laughs> it's the screecher. Let's talk about the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so uh, actually, the way the conversation started was uh, we have AI as as chess pieces. Who uh, you're there, right, Josh? Mm -hmm. the, yeah, yeah. Got, okay. We're still uh, AI as as chess pieces. He's like, did and, you cut the stream uh, off because we were supposed it, to talk it got about very the screen? I was like, oh. <laughs> uh, in uh, you know, they 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 uh, you know used used in the right amount they they encourage the player to do different things ask them to think about think about combat differently i mean you see in the base game that i am in a rhythm and then the marauder shows up and he changes that rhythm he dictates the pace the 100%. maker drones they dictate the pace like yeah. they they ask a little bit more of me they ask me to do something a little bit different and that's a welcome change because deleting enemies with a basic weapon switch is fun but uh, yeah. and moving and but you know you 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 do need something more. Mm -hmm. Again, that's all we want to do is give you a challenge that's worth your time to master, uh, because that's what skill based gaming is about. So so um, uh, during the conversation, uh, James Duggan, one of our one of our new designers, who's a real real up and comer, I'm, I'm very proud of James. Duggan Duggan. He said he said it'd be really interesting to have an AI type that you didn't want to kill, like someone that you wanted to leave on the chessboard. Uh, which I just immediately thought that was awesome. 
uh, you know, brought it brought it to the team. We we got into a little bit of a discussion about it along with James, and uh, you know, came up with the with the with the concept of a of an AI that if you burst it, it would let out an AOE blast that would buff all the AI around it. So it's basically a slow moving hell uh, hell zombie. Uh, he very, very clearly marked, you know, mm-hmm. very bright, and you'll notice it right away. And as it shambles, they, they play almost like a roving buff pod that you ignite if you happen to accidentally kill it. So we'll, we, you'll, you'll have encounters where there's like three of them placed out in this space. We use them a lot in incidental encounters because mm-hmm. it's really fun to like ask you to solve these. I think our incidental encounters, these incidental encounters are the spaces between the arenas, mm-hmm. are getting better and better and better. Um, for sure. So you, you, you'll put you in this space, have like three of them around and then say, here, deal with a bunch of specter whiplashes. And you're like, dude, I'm going <laughs> to, you know, like, like, or, or, Hey, here's some shield, you know, like here's some pinkies. Yeah. And you're like, Oh my God, I'm totally going to blood punch him. And you can't, because if you blood punch him, the AOE close. blast <laughs> will trigger the screechers yeah. and, and you're screwed. So it forces you to solve problems differently. And, mm-hmm. and uh, used in the right amount is a fantastic uh, change of pace. Uh, really just some interesting combat puzzles for you guys to solve. Force you to dig into your bin of tools. Think, how could I use this? Ice bomb this guy. Swing around that thing. Precision weapons. Avoid AOE blasts. Mm-hmm. All kinds of good stuff. Uh, it's it's a fantastic AI. I, I really think the, the job that the animators, the artists, the designers, everybody has done is is tremendous and i think that the gameplay designers uh did a fantastic job setting up the, you know it, these are the chess pieces but ultimately you know the gameplay guys they have to craft these encounters they have to figure mm-hmm. out the most optimal it's a really really important job it did gameplay and combat design how to how to set these chess pieces in place and different combinations and different ways to challenge players so uh i i think you're gonna freak out it's, it's oh yeah uh, it's really it's really fun it's Especially a really because, i was gonna say stops like, you in your tracks you know it's you're really oh, like totally. damn what do i do yeah and it, it's one of those things where like not only can it change an encounter at any point during an encounter but it's also like i know there's a lot of you out there and for good reason you guys are equipment fiends you use those frag grenades both of them all the time as you should because they're great tools in the in the tool shed as well as the but ice bomb but not anymore. <laughs> not, you can't just willy-nilly fire it off frag grenades because no. they will absolutely trigger the creatures. And when they do, oh boy. Yeah, now you have a totem that's activated and everybody's buff in that area. So yeah, it's going to change. We have, an encounter, <laughs> we have an encounter where uh, we have a screecher, mm-hmm. uh, three screechers and two two marauders Mm -hmm. and it's on a big platform and dude you're like because now you're winging shots with that super shotgun but dude if you wing that shot and clip that thing you're buffing two marauders so like it is (laughs) it is it is awesome like it is an awesome encounter and you know what you do is you know you got to think just create space find the right spot they're slow moving you know use your brains like i mean we we which is what we all want to do right we want to think when we when we play games yeah we want to just be uh, like Dead to yeah, the world. Not, we want to be like that's constantly it. We've engaged. Got, we will give you ways to solve the problem. We'll yeah. give you tools. We'll give you monkey bars. We'll give you all kinds of things. But uh, that's just one of many. Josh will. Josh and I will go down the list. Uh, got to got to work with marketing on this to make sure, sure, sure. what do they want to save for the bigger stuff and yeah. what can we use in here. But we want to make these last couple of shows uh, really cool for you guys and be that's able right. to reveal just a little bit more of DLC two coming up. Uh, to the to the big reveals uh, that you'll see soon, which big is time. Uh, which is awesome. Big time. And speaking of which, uh, we took off last week, but that means that we are just the schedule is the same as far as dates. I'll show it in a minute when we're done the stream. But essentially, we just combined instead of splitting up uh, Sentinel Prime, which we're on right now, and Terrace Nabad, we've combined them. So next week we are going to do both Sentinel Prime and Terrace Nabad, which means you are going to see the you know the Gladiator fight. You're going to see all the crazy lore stuff in there, and then you're going to see Terrace Nabod, which is, ah, it's tough, man. It, at one point, it was my favorite level, and I only say that because it's not like the level got worse. It's an amazing level, but there's so many good choices. But Terrace Nabod is one of those ones where, like, that first Marauder fight is just, it's such yeah. a good test of metal at the point in the game that you're at. It's just, like, it just throws it at you on that first bridge after, like, a, a couple, you know, like a, a Cacodemon uh, you know, cyber monkey or whatever it is there. And it's just, it just starts the level with such a good tone and man, that is, Oh, it's awesome. I love, I love, I, I, yeah, we're getting in there. uh, We're getting in there, but okay. It's it's very fun. It's very, very fun. So 
any first of all everybody that's been here we love you guys we thank you guys thank you for being here with us spending this time with us as always i know you guys are coming from all different regions and times because you guys text me about it on discord and you're like it was 3 a.m right now but that was a pretty good stream And i'm like damn go to bed thank you for being here with us but go to bed and again uh, we love all you guys. Thank you for being a part of the stream and the Slayers Club, slayersclub.com, discord.gg, doom for all things doom, discord.gg uh, slash spicy demons for all things battle mode. But final thoughts on this week, Hugo. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Uh, really closing out DLC 2, working hard, uh, working on the balance, uh, getting that dialed in just right. A uh, little bit of time left to do that, not much. And then... Um, uh, gotta stop buying slot cars and gotta finish <laughs> my <laughs> gotta finish painting my my Warhammer shit and, yeah. and then uh, no and Goals. then just gaming probably gonna play some some how do you say it Valheim I think you're doing Valheim I think you just Valium? said Valium but that's a different game we can just play the <laughs> the Viking game on <laughs> yeah totally no I mean there's no, it, it's a great like you said it's a great time to I know it's a crazy time in the world and it's a crazy time for for a lot of people going through a lot of things but you know, for those of us that have the luxury to be at home and still work, or even that we have to go and leave home and come back, hopefully you have enough time to get through some of that backlog or even all that new stuff. There's just so many good games to play right now. You know what I mean? And, and uh, you know, absolutely. And, and to be able to hang out with your friends and, you know, go, go on the discords and, yeah. and hang out with everybody and just have a good time. That's what it's all about. And I like mean, here honestly, right now, this is what, this is why we do this. That's it. It's, Cause we it's just get just to have fun. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I look forward to to seeing all you guys out there playing. I love watching and and um and what else you're playing, you know, yeah. cuz it's uh I like it. I like that this stream is just a celebration of pop culture and video games. It's fun. For that's, sure, that's for what sure. I'd rather do. So, yeah. Amen. But uh yeah. The, the another another good week in the bag. Let us know what you want to see more of, less of uh, yeah. uh any anything you want and um we'll try to we'll try to give it to you guys. But I'm excited to share a lot of the stuff with you guys. Uh, yeah, I think you guys deserve it. You, you've stuck with us for so long now. It's kind of incredible when you think about it that the game has been out for almost a year now. Yeah, and, um, it's insane. The, the community is is still thriving. It's crazy. You know, it's, uh, it's a single player game. You know, yes, yeah. and we have battle mode, but, uh, you know, it's primarily a single player game. And uh, it's just been amazing seeing everybody uh, you know, kind of come along with the game. So I love watching you guys too. I, I see it all the time on social media. People like mm -hmm. at a first, first couple levels, man, I'm trying to get the hang of this. And then, uh, yeah, the white belts of, of today or the black belts of tomorrow, the people who are just putting on a show. For I got to sure. see this AZ ops guy. I haven't seen him play yet. Oh man. I see, uh, for a treat. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure he's a monster. So we'll, um, we'll check it out. Hell yeah. It's, but it's, it's been fun as always. Yep. Thank you guys for joining us. We're going to be right back here next week and for the next bunch of weeks because we are beating this game that this yes. guy right here happened to be the game director <laughs> on. That's Doom Eternal, the base game. And when we are done, uh, not only will he have gone through this whole experience with us, but uh, we might be pretty close to Ancient Gods Part 2. We're not talking about release dates or any of that stuff yet, but we are going to give you some breadcrumbs and some... some yes. Some goodies, some 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 goodies between now and then to chew on to get you ready and to get you hyped. So thank you guys yeah. again. We love you guys. We will see you next week. See you later. Thanks, Hugo. Thank you. Later, guys. Later. If I can find the button and wait for it, thanks for watching. New schedule now. <laughs>